Hello, everybody. Oh, first one, a question, put comments, Brian Harper. How is everyone tonight? Those looking forward to this presentation? Oh, we've got Tim Judge on there as well. Got to put some yeses, ones, let us know who's on tonight, guys. <laughs> Brian's book, good man. How are you? Pretty good, mate, pretty good. Barry Newton's on. We've got Brandon McIntosh on. We've got Ted Wasco, Brent. Brian Blackwood, Valerie Tobin, Gene, Mark Metzdorf. Can't pronounce that very well. Got a few of now commenting, guys. I'm looking forward to this presentation tonight because it's not a sales presentation for a change. We're actually doing something that I love doing, which is um, building websites that make loads of money. <laughs> and then we've got Jerry, Paul Wood, Daryl. Just having a quick look. We've got Keith Best on with us as well. Do you want to test your microphone, Keith? Just everyone let us know if you can hear Keith's microphone. Good evening, everybody. Can you all hear me okay? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, Barry, Tommy, Valerie, Gil, Wayne. Bloody hell, they're going fast. I can't read that quick. Yes, <laughs> from Paul. <laughs> You've got a big size webinar tonight. Well, we're going to cover something tonight, um, guys, which, which is going to be basically, I, I forgot the name of the presentation. Let me just open my uh, folder. <laughs> Yeah, start. evergreen websites, step by step, how to build evergreen websites from start to finish. We're going to take you through the whole process. Now, the, the one difficult thing that um, everybody's finding out after this is the content. Now, we've got another webinar next week, which is going to take care of that for you all. So what, what I'm going to do is auto um, register everybody for next week's webinar. And then obviously we'll email out for everybody else because the two things together, if you've got the content covered and MPP with this, You've cracked it. I mean, th th this this method come to light about 18 months ago. And since then, it's been getting developed by myself, by Keith, and by some of our real high-level high, high level users. Um, I don't think Daryl's turned up yet tonight, but the people are making serious dough with this. And what we found is the people that do it right and spend the time on the first site getting it perfect, they're the ones making really, really, really big money out of it. And the people who just want to throw out crappy sites and, and, and don't get it perfect, um, tend to struggle. And if you, you, they come back to you six months later, say, I'm still not making any money in this industry. Well, stop putting out crap, basically. <laughs> right, so, so sorry guys, I'm waffling a bit there. Um, so what we're gonna cover tonight is I'm gonna do step by step, as you can see on the screen. Can everybody see my screen? Yep, 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 yep. Pine tree sites, is that what it says on it? Yep, 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 yep. Pine, pine tree sites. Evergreen. Money making. <laughs> right, okay, Brian. <laughs> Hello, world. Okay, you just can't. Right, this is a fresh installation, this. Now, we've got a few people who've come on tonight. We've probably had about, we get about 15 new users a week on Magic Page plugins. So, this is going to help the guys that have only just started doing it. And it's also going to help the, um, the people who've been doing it for a long time. But what I'm doing is a brand new, fresh install for, from scratch. So, this has been installed and I'm going to run through and create not an absolutely perfect evergreen site, but I'm going to take you through the document that we we, we shared earlier, which has gone missing off my screen for some reason. Um, one sec, guys. We're go I'm going to take you through the document step by step by step, how to build a perfect evergreen webinar uh, website. And then at the end, Keith and Daryl, if he turns up, are going to go through some really, really advanced stuff. I'm not going to leave the webinar tonight until I've demoed everything that everybody needs to see. So we might need a few toilet breaks if it's a long one. But if people get to the point where you, you, you want to ask questions at the end, I'll go through all your questions and everything. So nobody's going to leave not having a question answered tonight. Every single question will get answered and demoed. So we're going to show you absolutely everything so that nobody comes off the webinar not knowing how to do this. Um, I'm just trying to hide my screen a second whilst I open the PDF because I'm going to open it on my other screen. I'm just getting an application error, so I might disappear shortly. <laughs> okay, then. So Keith's already bored and he's leaving. <laughs> oh, Thanks, mate. Right. Um, right, just put the PDF on. And I'm, I'm just taking my time, guys, because I'm, I'm letting I'm letting people get onto the webinar as well. Obviously, there's the room is still filling up. Uh, people like to turn up a little bit late. Um, I don't expect we're going to get like four and five hundred, unlike we get for some of our sales webinars. But I do imagine we're going to get quite a few people on. Just 
Fuck on that. Okay, okay. Can I just ask everybody before we start? Has everybody got their PDF? And did anyone pay any attention to the email I sent out where I asked you to download it and get a pen? You'd be better doing this. There's a section on it for notes. Yes, Brent, it will be recorded. Someone's saying there's no sound. Just refresh your screen, press command and F5, EJ. Still asking for replay. There will be a replay, yes. Am I, am I, am I breaking up you, Keith? You're not being up for me now, but I'm saying am I back? Because I've just had to reboot. Well, not reboot, but re-come back into the, the webinar. It kicked us out. <laughs> All right, Brian's asking how can we make serious dough? I will show you this tonight. I'll show you the full process tonight. Is it starting yet? Yeah, it's about to start. Yes, 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 thanks. You're breaking up. Yes, I have the PDF. Yes and yes. Um. Did not get the PDF. Right, there's a few of you saying you didn't get the PDF. Those that didn't, if you look on the handouts tab, you can download it from inside the webinar. I've put it on the handouts tab for you so we can all work through it together. Um, has everybody got the PDF from the downloads? Mike, is there a webinar about schema plugin? Right, I'm going to go through something to do with the schema plugin as well, Kevin. So um, I. Schema plugin in it um, and how I use it for my thing. I did two videos yesterday on it and the day before. Got it, got it, got it. Right, yes, got it. Right, everyone's got it. Okay, guys, I'm going to push on. I'm going to start working through this PDF with everybody and obviously ask questions as we go as i spot the questions i'll try and answer them for you guys but i'm just going to literally push on and start working through so first page of the pdf you're going to have your table of contents which has got magic page plugin wp schema plugin mentions elementor on there now we can use elementor pro or not it mentions short coder now this is this is one i've been using which i use in instead of sometimes x fields but it does a very similar process so if everyone knows what x fields is which i'll show you during the webinar we're going to go through that. Uh, all in one WP migration is the one I use to clone the website, but there's lots and lots of different cloners out there. So, whichever one you prefer, they all do the same job. Cloudflare, I'm just going to briefly brush over that after we've put it all together and explain why you use Cloudflare for your, for your SSL. And then you wait 24 hours and do your real simple SSL. Then we're going to run through the process um, of how to clone a website and installation instructions. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand this over to Keith and he can then run through some more advanced stuff with you. So straight away, I'm pushing on and I'm looking at the evergreen step-by-step, -step, now Magic Page Plugin, evergreen step-by-step -step process, right? So I'm literally gonna just start and, and just run through this as I would. And like I said, if anyone's got any questions during the presentation, just ask and I'll answer. So first thing we're gonna do is install Magic Page Plugin. One second, guys. I'm dragging you into my screen so I can see you all. Okay, so first thing we do is we install the plugins. Yep. So for those who don't even know how to do that, that's that's where we're going to start now. So we click install plugin. Click add new. Upload. And I'm going to just find... And as you can see, I've got Magic Page 5.3 there ready to install. So we click on the install for that. I thought I was having um, internet problems then. Right, first thing to do after you've done that is pop your API key in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the screen a second because I'm using my real API key here. That I use for all my websites. Oh. 
And as soon as you verify your API key, what it will do is it will take you over to install your databases, which I'll show you now. Thought I was having internet problems there. Don't worry, I'll unpause the screen in a second, guys. I'm just hiding my API key because, like I said, this is the one I actually use for my own personal sites. And everybody should be able to see the map screen now. Yep, can you all see that map screen? Yep, 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 okay, cool. Right, so the next thing you do is you come onto here and you install your databases. I'm gonna do this in the UK because I do most of my stuff in the UK. If you have a look in the top right-hand corner up here, you'll see we've got 19 countries that we use. This is just a single uh, and UK license I use, but you've got 19 different countries that you can use this in from Austria, Australia, Canada, Switzerland, Cyprus, Germany, Denmark, Spain, France, Ireland, India, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, New Zealand, Sweden, United Kingdom, United States, and South Africa. Some of them have got real good um, accurate demographics. Some are not quite as perfect, like South Africa and places. It's a little bit harder to get more perfect uh, database. So next thing what you would do is here is you come down and you'd install whatever you want to install. So I've installed London. Uh, but just a single site, a, a single installation. Now you don't need <clears throat> to install lots and lots of, of locations. So what you can do is you can clock your filters in here. And if I click install just major locations there and click apply filters, it will only install one location. Let me just show you. So in, in London, we've got 793 locations. If I click apply filters, I can go up here and say, okay, well, I only want to do the Camden area of London. Okay, and then click apply filters and what will happen is it's 22 locations that's going to come in, in the Camden area of London. I can click on that and click only major locations and get rid of that and it'll only do a single location which would be London. Okay, we're going to do a couple more than that for tonight, but oh, I've just installed it, sorry. There we go, let's hit City of London. Get rid of major locations, click apply filters. And we've got 22 locations in the city of London. So we'll install just 22 locations tonight, but you can go through and install as many as you want based on your server and location. And that's how quick and easy it is to change what you're actually doing. Okay, right, install databases, set the central location. Right, I've put set the central location, but before we do that, we wanna come on to here, where it tells you basically minify your footprint. Now, what this is going to do is going to put a, a JavaScript file in there to hide it, to hide it so people can't tell you've got Magic Page on your site, which I think is really important so people can't see what you're using. Um, it's probably not good for sales for us. Where it says Magic Page, there we do like. Does anyone want to pick a type of site we're going to we're going to work through tonight? Because I'm really not bothered. <clears throat> Cats. <laughs> I'm not doing a cat site, Daryl. <laughs> give me, give me some, give me some local. Locksmith. <laughs> yeah, mortgage locksmith, tree guy, personal injury software developer, plumber, 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 Listen, electrician. Let's do electrician because I know a little bit. Whoa, coaching. Right, we've got loads here. Real estate, real estate, right? We're getting quite a few for real estate. It's not going to be the best site in the world, but I'm, I'll, I'll do real estate because we've had more requests for that than anything else. Ninja monkey. <laughs> right, so we're, we're going to do real estate, yeah? So if we were doing real estate, oh, we'd edit this. I don't know anything about real estate, so I'm just going to put mortgage guy. Right, basically that's what's going to be shown in the back of your thing, so they're not going to be able to see Magic Page plugin, which is what you would want to save when you minify your footprint. 
so that nobody can see that you've got Magic Page plugin installed on your site. Okay, and then what will happen is it goes green, so you know it's been done. If you want to reinstall more databases, you do it here, top right hand side where it says MPP databases. Then the few things you'd, you'd want to go in and do is set your default radius to whatever you want it. We set it at a thousand if you're doing big sites, but realistically, we're doing London, we're only going to want 30 mile. And then go on to here, this is your URL structure. So you're going to have domain.com forward slash this forward slash location. Okay, so if we're doing real estate, we do uh, houses or property or something along those lines for for you thinking you don't need to give max api key and i can show you why then what i would would say to do is drop this down and enable spin tech support on all pages so on, on your list you'll see this is how you do this where it says oh, um enable spin tech support you click enable then what you do is you set it to auto rewrite itself so if we enable auto rewrites and we go in here and say like every two months 100% of the content on 100% of the pages is going to be respun. Okay, you can even do it every three months. What that's going to do is go in and automatically respin the content for you. So once you've built a site, you don't have to keep coming back and respinning the pages and respinning the posts or updating things because this is automatically going to do it for you on an ongoing basis. Okay, then we're going to click save settings. And that's all you need to do for your settings. So then what we would do. I'm getting loads of crap popping up here, one sec. Shut that down. Then what we would do is we'd go over and we just add a magic page. So you can click on the magic page tab here and click add new. This will just verify your license key to make sure you've got a valid license. So obviously if you're not paying for your license, you won't, um, you won't get in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the central location. So we'll just go in top right hand side here Start typing in a location in the area. So if there's more than just London with an LO, there isn't. Put the first two letters in as you're there, tower, wherever that is, must be somewhere in London. So I'll just set the central location of London for this one. Okay, and we should see 22 pages pop up, which is what we, we installed on the databases. And then I'm gonna publish that. So what that's done now is that's set our central location for us. Okay, which means the whole site is going to be worked around that central location. And as we start to build more sites, and, and I'll show you how to do the evergreen model, you'll realize the central location is a very important part. Okay, right, set your URL structure, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we've done all that. I'm going to page two now, guys. So page two, WP Schema plugin. This is optional, people who haven't got it, but I'm going to install it because I use it now on all of my service pages. I'm going to show you how to use it and set it up correctly tonight. Uh, because we've already got the schema tool on the magic page, but to add it on all the other pages can be a little bit complicated. One, two. Jeff, somebody top. Is that you, Keith? No, it's Daryl, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry. It told me to test the microphone. I didn't know you guys could hear me. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problems. I'm going to mute. Oh, he's muted. All right, cool. I thought I could hear something. Right, so Daryl's there as well, guys. So that means that's good because he's got some cool stuff to show you at the end. <clears throat> okay, so I forgot where I'm up to. Right, so next I'm going to install the next plugin. Obviously, this is going to start getting better as we go, but for the guys who don't know what they're doing, you, obviously you need to do this. So we're going to add a new plugin. We're going to click upload. I'm going to choose a file. And I'm going to install my schema plugin. And when I install the API key on this, again, I will um, pause my screen simply because I'm using my personal API key here. So I'm just going to click activate. Okay, and as you can see, it starts up here. After you've added your API key, it moves down the barrier. Don't know why it does it. I asked my development team. He said, um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Where's his answer? So I'm just going to pause the screen while I add my API key. Okay, after you've added your API key, what's going to happen is it's going to take you over to this page here. Okay, and then the first thing you've got to do is you click this blue bar. 
enable pages. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to get them to change this in the next update where this, these are automatically switched on. But what it does, it's not automatically switched on. So you come into here and then you can flick onto home page, hit the drop down menu here, and turn on posts, pages, media. And then you've got another option down here with all the categories, tags, and stuff like that. I tend to just switch these ones on. You don't really need much else. Um, <clears throat> but it's, that's personal preference, obviously. Those who are more advanced with schema, uh, knock yourselves out and do what you want. You've got a few other options here. I tend to leave them set as they are. So require confirmation before you delete it. JSON LD format and micro format data. Okay, so we've activated that on all pages. I'm going to move to the next page now, guys. So there's no notes. Next one is Elementor. I like to use Elementor with my sites. Um, now, I know a lot of us <coughs> have been, and I'm not going to do Elementor Pro, I'm just going to do normal Elementor tonight. Uh, I know a lot of us have been using Generate Press. Okay, I've, I've been using Elementor's new theme recently because it says it's much, much faster. So the two themes that I would recommend is either Generate Press, which is pretty good, or if you just type in Elementor, there's a theme called Hello. That's supposed to run much, much faster than the other themes with, with oh, Elementor. Sorry, Kat, are you there, Keith? I said, I've just started playing with that one as well. Somebody else mentioned so I've started playing with it. It is pretty good. Yeah, I've been using it on um, on quite a few sites, mate, and it seems to be a lot quicker. I always also go in here, because we're going to be cloning these, and you're going to be sending them from site to site to site to site, I always go in and delete any baggage, okay? Because literally, the bigger the file, the longer it takes to import and export from sites to site. And if you're doing 50 sites in a day, it can start becoming a bit of a pain. Okay, so I always use that. And then what normally happens is it asks you to install Elementor here on the top right-hand side once you install their theme. I'm just going to activate that. Okay, okay, that's been activated right now. This is important, this bit, and this is where a lot of people get a lot of support questions about this. Okay, so what you do is you go to Elementor Settings and you turn it on on Magic Page. I always turn it on on all four. Okay, click the Settings tab here on the left-hand side and switch me on Magic Page, meaning you can now use the Elementor Page Builder inside of your Magic Page, okay? And whilst that's saving, I'm going to scroll to the next one. Oh, it's saved. Sorry, I thought the page was going to change. Right, now we've got two options on the next bit, guys. And this, this is essential for Magic, for, for, for um, <clears throat> excuse me, for, so on the next page, it says short coder and X fields, yes? Now, this, this is essential for, evergreen style websites. Now, the reason it's essential is if you're building an evergreen site and you want to sell sites to multiple clients or you want to rent sites out to multiple people, you need a single location in the website where you can change things that are going to change on a per client basis. So, for example, and as, as it says on the form, um, mobile number, email address, address, address line one, region, county, zip, now, not necessarily for the Magic Page plugin, a customer might actually have their own location and still want to cover an area served with all the service pages, which is what your Magic Page will do. So these type of short codes are pretty important. Now, you've got two options here. You can use short coder, which is a plugin, or if you don't want to use the short coder, you can go over to Magic Page plugin, you can click on edit, and then you scroll down to the bottom here, and you've got what's called X fields, okay? Now, what I like to do is open a text folder, which I've just opened one on my other screen, and then I, I like to copy these in. So what I would usually do is type in number, which is going to be the client's number. Sometimes I'll have a phone or, or landline and mobile, but I tend to always use number and do that and click save. And then I'll copy this and I'll add that to the text file because I know that's my phone number to file. And then minimum, I would always go in and and then oh, new X field, and I would do email. Okay, let me click save. 
And it'll make more sense to those who don't know what they're doing once we get to this bit. If you follow through this bit, I know it seems long-winded. Once you've done this, once this process has been completed, you start getting to the point where this becomes so, so easy. You can, you can build, build, create a brand new, amazing, unique site in five minutes. But going through this process is, is, is very much worth it. So I'm just going to do the email and the phone number one for the presentation tonight because we don't need to go through too much. Now, if you were going to use this on the short coder one, You go to plugins library, short coder. This is the only one I've found that works without bugs. Okay, it's free, works without any bugs whatsoever. It seems to work really, really well. <clears throat> Once you've activated it, you usually have to refresh your page because it doesn't show up straight away. Click refresh. Now, the reason I like it is because it puts a menu here. So you don't have to go to the magic page every time. And then you click on all short codes and it, oop, bugger off. And then you create short code. So if you wanted <clears throat> phone, then you just type the number in here and then click publish. And what that will do is that will provide a short code. You see this one here? Copy that and then again paste it into your into your folder. And then if you want to go and add another one, you click on all short codes, create short code. And again, we put in email or address or whatever it is, and and these seem to these work absolutely everywhere throughout the website. Okay, so literally, if you've got a phone number that you're going to put in your site, you always use your short code. You don't use, you don't write the number anywhere on the website because if you do, it starts becoming a pain in the ass every time you're trying to transfer this thing over. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next page now, guys. <clears throat> Right, the one last one I use for my magic. So this is a complete setup there. So obviously the, the beginning of the presentation has been pretty boring, but you're gonna see why it's all essential. The next step is the all-in-one WP migration. Okay, now you can use whatever one you want. There's loads of different ones you can use. I, I use this one. So I go to upload a plugin, choose unlimited extension. Once I install this unlimited extension, it always prompts me to Add the other bit. <clears throat> oh, in fact, it's opened a page. One second, guys. Now, there's lots of free ones of these, so you don't have to use this one. But I like this one. It's simple. You don't have to touch any databases. You don't have to do anything. And I'll show you at the end how quick and easy it is to download and upload a new site. Okay, and then because I've had this a while, I click check for updates and, and just upload the update on mine. Okay, so we're, we're pretty much ready now to start building the site. Now, I, don't, I can't go over to Cloudflare and do this because I've not got Cloudflare set up. So you can build without doing the Cloudflare play, page, but just as a quick tip for you, right? Cloudflare, right? So I'm doing Dorset.services forward slash evergreen demo. So uh, I've I've got a site actually on Dorset.services. What the way I, I do this, when I click sign up, I will go into here. As you can see, I've got lots there. Mike it gas fellas, Mike it gas fellas, Almira, get Mike it gas fellas, Altia. And what you do is I just use the same password and I put whatever URL I'm currently using in here. So on this one, it'd be Dorset.services. Click create and it'll create your account and then you just change your C names. I've done a video on YouTube how to do that. You don't need to go and verify your, your email address. So just use whatever the URL is you're doing it from. You don't need to set up an email for it, but just use whatever the URL you're on so nobody else can obviously log in and steal your uh, Cloudflare account. Okie dokie, right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to push past the Cloudflare page. I can do more detail on it at the end and show you exactly how it works because I've already got an SSL certificate on this site. So then wait 24 hours and you go back into your plugin menu. This is after we've built the, the site and you go up here and you just put in really simple. I'll click go and it's got the little padlock there. Install that. 
and then flush the cache and go to MPP settings, which is over here on your settings page and click clear delete spin text cache over there and then, and then click save settings. Now what that's going to do for you is that's going to flush all the HTTP out and activate HTTPS across your site correctly. But after you've done your Cloudflare step, you need to do this because wait 24 hours, then do this and it will flush everything out and it will work HTTPS throughout your site correctly. Okay, I think we're getting to the good bit now where I can actually start building some stuff. Okay, create a new page using Elementor. Right, so first thing we want to do is we want to create a new page using Elementor. Okay, so we go into pages. And what I would always do is I will nearly always delete anything that I'm not going to use. So sample page, I trash that. And then I go to the trash and I delete permanently. Now, the sample page is being created by MPP, so you want to leave that there because that's your templates if you start to use templates. I think Daryl's going to show you something about that later on. I'd also go in and trash posts just to keep this as small as possible because it speeds up the process of, of cloning this at the end. Right, so we've got... Those <clears throat> pages gone. Right, so we're going to click Add New Page. And I'll just call this home and click publish. Then what we're going to do is edit with Elementor. Come down to the bottom here where it says settings and hit the default and change it to Elementor Canvas. And what that does is gets rid of all the crap at the top and the bottom and all the sides. So you're literally on a blank canvas. Then if you click this little folder here, and the reason I'm not going after the pro version is I'm going to show you this can be done without the pro version. Most of my sites, in fact, I've got a site right there. See that? Which I'm going to show you is near the end. And I've got probably 50 or 100 of those. Um, and I'm going to show you near the end how we can upload that site identically as an evergreen style site and set it to a specific location. But what we're going to do over here is we're going to come into here. And as you can see, that's not a pro template. So you don't need to install Elementor Pro. Okay. So you flick down, find a template you like, and simply click insert. It's asking me to activate it. I don't know why, but I've got an account. So I can connect. So you must have to set up a free account with them. You don't have to buy it, but you need to they want your email address, obviously. Money's in the list, like they say. Okay, so it's really that simple to create a page. Okay, now that looks pretty smart. And what we can do from this point, once we've updated, is we can start changing the content. <clears throat> now, this is where things get quite interesting, right? So, what, as you see at the top, it says Elementor Home here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the dashboard. I'm going to click on Settings and go to General. Okay, now we're going to do this as a real estate. So I don't know what real estate keywords are. Um, if somebody can just pop what, what main searches are for real estate in, in, in the comments. Wow, we're getting all those questions. <laughs> Clint Butler, come on, Mike, geez. Sorry, mate, we're not all experts like you. <laughs> right, homes, 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 buy a home, homes for sale. Right, so what we do is, we probably call it, you're going to put in your location short code, which is pulled in from your MPP, homes. And now, if I was doing a service pit, service site here, if it say locksmiths, so that's what I do a lot of, I'd have locksmith location, and then I'd spin it, and I'd have locksmith location, locksmiths in location, locksmith in location, Location locksmith and location locksmiths, and I'd spin all six of them together, right? But I'm going to put this as location homes just to show you, and I have a tendency to just delete that bit there. So that's 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 essentially. So what will happen is up here will change on 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 the site. So if we go to the home page now, you'll see it says London Homes, okay? Because we set London as our home location. Settings, reading, you got settings, reading, click on this and set the home page. 
is the one we just created. So now we can work in the template as the home page and we can edit with Elementor. Right, so first thing to do is when we're putting in our content, now this is this is essential. Um, we've gone to a, to, to a level where me, me and Paul, a guy who I do a lot, a lot of work with, have just, um, we've just got Adrian, I don't know if he's on tonight, he might be, but we've just had Adrian write 84,000 words of content for us for a single evergreen style site. So what he's done is, is he's spun everything that we're using at, and we're going to go through a lot more of that next week about spinning content and a content creation tool, um, spun at sentence level and at word level throughout the whole thing. So even things like this here would be spun five or six or 10 times and then at word level and everything else. So the way you write your content when you're creating these evergreen sites, if people don't know what spin text is, I'll show you a little bit now, you might be able to see it. So for example, we'd have Mr. Bracket. Right, so, and let me just see them keywords you guys have put in. What we do is we put in a pipe, and then we use. Rentals, I'm just making these up as I go, guys. Homes in location. And then we close it. Now we'd spin it quite a bit more than that when we're doing it, but I'm just gonna give you this as a quick example. I'm not gonna go through and write hundreds and hundreds of content for this because we'll be here all night. But now when we go and view the page, what you'll see is it's picked London Homes as the one that it's going to use on this occasion. And what it'll do is it'll keep that one now throughout the site. So wherever we're getting any titles or anything used, it's going to keep that throughout the whole of the site. So we can click on edit. On these, we do something similar. So if we were doing homes and you're having a different tab that leads to a different part of your site, um, you're going to go into this bit here. And you're going to have like cheap, low cost. Even discount, I don't know if you'd have that as the homes one. Homes, houses, property. Like I said, I don't know anything about. And then we'd probably put open brackets in, have a pipe, so it's not gonna say in every time, and then close it, and then location, and then what I'd probably do, and I'm not gonna do it on the presentation, I'd spin that around, so I'd have location, um, homes at discount prices and stuff like that, a click update. I'm not gonna go through all of these guys, because obviously, obviously we'll be here all night, but what you do is every section that you write in your content, this is how you write it, and then what you'll do is when you view the page, you'll see that it will spin it, discount property in London. Okay, and London Homes. So you're going to have all your different sections and every every section of your content that you're going to be writing throughout your page, you're going to go through and you're going to create that. Now, I can keep going through and doing these bits, but I don't think everyone's going to want to see me write a whole page of content um, for, for the whole site. What I can do, though, is I can go over to my other site here and click Edit with Elementor and you'll see in a little more detail what I'm talking about. So here we've not spun it, we've kept the, the, the main title. So if we scroll down here, as you can see, the content throughout the page is all spun massively. So there's probably a thousand words of content in that tab, a thousand words of content in this tab, and the same here, a thousand words of content. And what we've done is we spin it on every single page so it's unique every single time it comes up. Okay, now this, these are more of demo sites than the ones I'm actually doing, like the 84,000 words we've just purchased they that would that content would be 100% perfect i'll use this i'll steal a bit of this copy so let's say this was our content section
And as you can see, it pulls in all the content and spins it different every single time. Okay, damage car locks, option one, option two, and so on and so forth. So this the spun side of things. Now I've got videos already about the spin text, and a lot of you probably already know what spin text is, but I've tried to go through it in as much detail without sending everyone to sleep. Um now what we would normally do is you're probably going to leave this section blank when you're doing it because what you're going to do is you're going to build a template first that you're going to use across all your pages okay so we would add the spun content here 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 and here and spin it to the nth degree we'd probably then come in and maybe delete that bit there i can't remember what it was spin this section leave this section blank right pull out these unless it's something that you need across all sections but i'm going to make this very simple and very easy for us to to use tonight because we don't need to go into too much detail for the actual presentation and then what we're going to do is we're going to pop down here and we're going to save it as template okay so you save it as a template and then you're going to put main page template okay And we've got a template now so we've got a template we can use throughout our website now if we were going after discount homes what we're, what we're initially going to do is inside the dashboard we're going to add some additional pages okay i'm not going to do hundreds of these pages because i'm going to give you an example at the end of, of a site that i've already done it with and, and and pull it all in and show you what it looks like so we'd have let's say discount homes in location and we click publish and this is going to be one of our service pages edit with elementor go over here click my templates and insert the template that we've built obviously you're going to spend longer than i've done on this video creating the template and as you can see we've now got the template page in here as well we click update and then we'll do that one more time just so you can Add a new page publish edit with Elementor I'm going to update now a lot of people like to put menus into the site what i tend to do is i tend to on my home page as i'll show you on this site now one second is i add the links to those pages in in the footer down here okay that's just how i do it people have some people have menus um is another one where we've done it with a menu so as you can see all the different service pages have all been added into menus and these are all different service pages i don't think we've done the schema on that one yet this one over here has which i'm going to show you so now what you've got is a normal website with your home page and then you've got another two service pages which you can use inside there now i, I would usually have four or five but as you can see with a site like that we've got maybe 25 30 and then with a site like this one I've probably got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. so about 10 or 11 pages that you would use as your service pages. Next step is your magic page. I usually have the location short code up here, but that's totally up to you, whatever you want to put in. Again, edit with Elementor. So this is after you've built your template, what you're going to do is you're going to Add your template throughout all your pages. Get a drink while that's working. <clears throat> okay, if you've got this at the top, and it's not open, it's changed itself, but if that happens, it doesn't automatically change come down here click the settings tab 
and then drop that from whatever it's on to Elementor Canvas, and that will just keep it on the specific canvas for you. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to view this page. Right, one of the things we want to be adding throughout the website now for our internal linking structure is called the city shortcode. Now, if you go into your edit element, the into your magic page, scroll down on the right hand side, you're going to see numerous shortcodes you can use throughout the website. As you can see, you've got location, slug, county, region, zip, country. But the one we want is the city shortcode. Now, if you just copy that, it'll automatically pull in the 10 closest locations to the page you're currently on. Alternatively, you can <clears throat> Have different options this would pull in the 10 closest locations to the page you're currently on but it wouldn't have links so you can use that as part of your content or in your meta description and stuff like that you can list them so it'll put them in like a list format on top of one another and then that's for your schema builder to pull in your areas served i'll show you how that works later so we're just going to copy the general one and what we're going to do is going to go over to the home page It's not letting me add it there. Okay, that's going to look stupid as shit, so I'll put it down here. So what we're adding there is we can help you sell your property in cities and location. Now what that's gonna add for an internal linking structure for you, when we click out the box, you might actually be able to see it. Okay, it's not sharing, so we view the page. So what that's done, we can help you sell your property in Cheap, Bassingshaw, Bread Street, Vintry, Cornhill, Coleman Street, Queen Hill, whatever that is, Broad Street, Langbourne, Barbican, and London. Okay, so what it's going to do is pulled in the 10 closest pages to the to the one you're currently on. Okay, now if we do the same thing inside of the magic page, And you view the magic page what will happen as we click through each page as you can see it's got cheap basing shaw bread street now if i click on corn hill the list is going to change okay so langbourne broad street lime street it dynamically changes throughout the page itself all right i'm just looking change all your added content up to shortcodes right so ev everywhere throughout the site wherever no matter where you're going what you do is you're going to add short codes in absolutely everywhere so wherever you're going to be writing content on a local website obviously because this is designed to work on local you're always going to be using short codes and you're always going to be spinning your content so for example if i was writing in here have the best priced homes for sale in location In cities but say we didn't want all them links on the page because we've already got a load of links down here we would use the titles version I can't remember what it is so I'd have to go back into the magic page and, and copy it because as you can see what this has done is it pulls in all the locations and it pulls in cheapest home sales in London now if we hit the cheap version of that that's not a show because we're on the magic page now Sorry, I know this is getting a little bit complicated, but it is. Copy the titles version.
Okay, so so does everybody understand what I'm, I mean by the content now? Because I don't want to spend too much time on the content, but I also don't want people not to understand what I mean about using short codes everywhere you go. As you can see, that's got the cheap one on it. Now, if I go to a different location like Queen Heath, the whole thing will have changed, and the last one will be Queen Heath. That'd be for sale, Bread Street, Castlebred, Vinciard, Farrington. And then if I go to a different one like Cornhill, the last one will be Cornhill because that's the location. And all, all of the list change. So your list changes and you can use that inside of your content. I'm just going to absolutely understood. Yes. Um, somebody's put, does Adrian offer his services for writing content to MPP members? Thanks. He does, yeah, but um, <laughs> it's not cheap. <laughs> um, I, I won't tell you how much it's cost me, but I, I've just ordered 84,000 words and, and it took him a few months to do it for me. But uh, top quality content, absolutely perfect. Spins, reads perfectly every single time. So if he's on here, I'll keep my eyes open for him. Um, he's good at what he does. Can you, right. Okay, Tim, Tim's just mentioned X Fields. Okay, guys, right. Yeah, that's one thing I've not touched on yet. So what I'll do is, you remember before I said to you, add your X Fields numbers absolutely everywhere. Okay, so what you want to be doing, wherever you've got location specific data, uh, sorry, wherever you've got, website specific data okay so you see the get started button on here on here we're on the we're on the magic page now inside the get started button let's, let's say we wanted that to be a click to call button you click on it you go up here and you type in click to call and like i said to you earlier i keep the short codes in in, in a uh, in in a txt tab so we pop that in there and as you can see it's the x field number then what i do is i go over to the link and i type in tel colon x fields number okay and click update now when i go and view the page what you're going to see it's done is pulled in the 999 number we put in the x field earlier and if you click it it's going to try and ring 999 don't know if everyone could see that but down the bottom it says tell 99999 okay so what we would then do let's say we go back to the home page so we, we do do some we do this everywhere. I'm going to go I can't hear you there, Keith. It's like you keep going off and on. I said, I'm going to go through X Fields. You're going to go bit. through that. Okay, buddy. Right, so X Fields number. And again, over here, we're going to have TEL colon X Fields number. Okay, so Keith's going to go through this in a lot more detail at the end. Right, so what you're going to find is anywhere you add the x fields number throughout the whole website doesn't matter where you put it yeah it's always going to show the number so whenever you want to make a change to that number so if so say we were selling this client this site to i don't know, someone called brian we go into your magic page sorry i've just come to the wrong one we click on edit magic page and brian's got all the sevens Oh, you got to click edit first. Yep. Save an update, and what's going to automatically happen now? Is the sevens are going to show on every single page in the website? So, so we're on the Evergreen demo page, which is the home page. Go and click on one of the linked pages and you get in the same situation with all the sevens. So we can change the number. So when you've got 15, 20, 30, 40 pages and you're going to be putting a phone number in it throughout for a specific customer, you want to use the X fields and they work throughout the whole website absolutely everywhere. Okay. Now what we're talking about with the content, you're going to do the same thing when you're doing your magic page, meta descriptions and meta titles and everything else. So you're going to want... And there's a, there's, a, there's a section here you can use. So you're going to have location, homes for sale. And I'm going to do this as a locksmith idea, just, just because I'm used to doing it. So what I'd have is locksmith, location, right? Then I'd have a pipe. Then I'd have locksmiths, location. Now, if you don't want to keep writing the word location, you can go over here and you can just click and copy it.
location. Now I, I've got six of these, which would be locksmith location, locksmith's location, locksmith's in location, locksmith in location, location. And what, what they do is they're, the, they're the, the six most searched keywords for every single area. So I tend to use all six of those. Now, if you're going to use the site a lot more, you go into a little bit more depth, but I don't tend to go into too much depth with the meta titles because I don't tend to have thousands and thousands of, of, of pages on my sites anymore. I might have one or 200, 200 pages and that will be the lot. Okay, so I tend to stick that in there. Now, I know Keith does this with your meta titles in his description. He puts everything inside the X field, which he will show you later on. All right, let me import schema, magic page, right. So the, the next step is your schema, okay? Now, if, if you're going for your homepage schema, what I do is I use a tool of um, Patrick Tuttle's tool, and I go in and I type in my keywords, like locksmith in Manchester or homes for sale in Manchester, and what it will automatically do is pull in every single uh URL for that keyword that's got schema on it. And then I just in, in, paste them all in and import them. So we've got the schema tool on the home page, yes? Right, because I know I've got a site with schema on, I'm gonna open the schema tool and rather than going in and doing showing you how to use the tool and everything, um, which I did a video on not yesterday, day before, which you can go and find on my, my YouTube channel. I'm just gonna go in and click import. I'm gonna go and grab my home page of one of my sites here and paste that url in and click import and what you're going to find is i'm sure we've got a lot more scheme than that on there view page source copy Scroll down to the bottom, click import. Now what I've just done wrong there, but it's not letting me import the schema. One sec. Scroll to the bottom. It might be my internet. Have you ever had that problem, Keith? Yeah, I'm just looking at your site now to see if it's actually got how much scheme it's got on. Uh... Right, so what you do is you put in URLs and you, you scrape and you pull in the schema, okay? Now, I tend to use five or 10 URLs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape whatever's on mine. I don't know why it's only showing organization schema. Minimize. Oh, here we go. It's pulled it all in. Don't know what happened there, guys. That must be a little glitch with the uh, with the thing. I'll, I'll show that section of the video to my programmers. So as you can see, my website's got organization, locksmith, video object, website, local business, professional services, creative work, and breadcrumbs. Now, what I do with the breadcrumbs list and, and this works absolutely fine. Now, I could show you all the rest of this, but with the breadcrumbs list, I, I find it quite important to do your list items. And as you can see, what I've done here is I've pulled in every listed items inside the breadcrumbs. I list all of the service pages. So this will list all of the service pages we've just recently created. At the minute, it's got a list of all these ones. Um, so what, and the, the way we do it, let me show you inside this site. And the reason I'm showing you is in here rather than going through it on every single page is 
it's going to be pretty long-winded if I do that. So let's scroll down to the it. And as you can see, what I've done here is I'm using short codes again. Right, the reason we're using short codes, it's got URL auto locksmith three hyphen five, yeah, car door lock replaced. Then it's got auto locksmith auto locksmith. So what that this is, if you look on this one, is this URL pulls in the URL, and that's the end of the URL to the service page. So if I open that, that's one of the service pages. So you're going to be using short codes throughout everywhere. Okay, now the reason we do that is that no matter where we pull this site, put, upload this site to afterwards it's always going to import everything dynamically. So here we'd spin this five or six times. Here we'd spin this car key repair. Here we'd spin this car key replacement, ignition barrel. But each of these links out to the service page, okay? Now the way I create my service page schema, so I scrape it in from, from all the top websites and I, I, would, I would save it, okay? Now what I do with my service page schema is slightly different. So let me minimize this. And guys, if anyone's got any questions, I know I'm not looking at the questions while I'm running through, I will go through and, and do everything for everybody at the end. Right, so if we hit one of the service pages, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to service schema.org. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is look for the site that's not schema app. There we go, schema.org site, okay? So let's give me the local business. That's going to spend it wrong, that's why. There we've got service schema.org, okay? If you spell it wrong, you'll get the wrong results, like I just did. Right, then what I do is for my each of my service pages, you're going to go into your pages, and we've got discount homes in London, which is the front for right that one. So, so here, yep, yeah, I'm going to click on edit this page. You're going to go into here and if you scroll all the way down, what you'll see is you've got a few examples that seem to fit, okay? An example of invoice for a purchase and an installation, a home cleaning offer for a variety of services in Massachusetts included. So this is my service pages, so, so these are my specific service pages. So what I'll do is go into here, click on JSON LD, scroll to the bottom of there, and I grab this code, okay? Now that code's not gonna make sense to anybody and obviously it's stupid and it's complicated, but because we've got the schema plugin included, we click on import, we click on the JSON LD code, paste that into there, and then we click process schema and we've got our service schema. And I'll quickly go through and change this for the, for the one we're doing. So basically we've got service schema, so that's cool. Um, arms for sale in location so all of your short codes work on here and you're going to spin the homes for sale similar to how you've spun everything else in your site okay where, where you've got your massachusetts here and your state where well, you can keep that as a state if you want and what you're going to do areas served so if your customer is serving a region you put that in. So what you're going to get there is the full region. That'll give you the full state. So say California. This sell houses in California because you've got your magic page short codes. Alternatively, you can have county. So let's say they only did Orange County, California. That will pull in Orange County on that one. But when they hit a page miles and miles away, or if they only serve a very small area, you're going to use a location short code, which is going to pull in the location. I'm going to stick to region, so it should pull in whatever oh in fact i'm going to stick to county because we're doing the uk we're not doing america um offer catalog again you're going to use specific keywords from your thing i'm not going to go through and do too many of these changes because you get the idea you're going to spin the content so you're going to go through and you're going to change these for your specific stuff and you're going to spin the content okay one-time service, service window washing. And you go through this and you change it for your specific keywords. And you save that to the current page. Then what you do for your next page, rather than going in and making loads of edits and stuff. So say you've got a, um, a cheap homes version in here. Let me show you on this page. Right, so what you do first, you click on preview. And what it's going to do, it's going to give you the code that you've just edited throughout. So wherever you've got your short code URL and things like that, 
they're all going to be included in here. See the location short code and the region short code will be in the county short code. So then what we do is we copy this code and when we're creating the next service page schema, we copy this in and we just follow the keyword for that particular page. Now we'll give you an example over here where I've done exactly this. So what I'm going to do is scroll down, card door lock replace, click on that. Let's go over and have a view of the schema for that particular page. So as you can see, the service schema, we've got Manchester Auto Locksmiths, we've got uh, Manchester, Manchester door lock replacement, car door lock replaced, car door lock replaced Manchester. Now, if we go in and view a different service page, and it's all done just copying that little bit of code and changing over the short codes. Sorry, changing the keywords, not the short codes. So we look on this page here. Car key programming. What you're going to find is it's the same schema, but every service page has the keywords in. Keys programmed for cars, car key programming. Okay, we're pulling the URL up there, so it's got its own URL. And then every single one of these service pages is linked to from the home page. Using your breadcrumb schema. There's a link on the page, obviously, but this sits in the head of your website and will be seen a lot quicker. So it will help getting your pages indexed faster and stuff like that. So if we go down to the breadcrumb schema, what you'll see is every single one of our service page URLs are all linked to from the schema inside the home page. Now this looks complicated. Oh, I'll tell you what just happened, guys. My screen's just gone off. You can still see it. Yeah, you can still see that screen, but I've got a second screen here that's got all of the questions and stuff. Okay, it's reopened. Must have just been the TV timed out. So as you can see, it links out to all of the additional pages. And then obviously we've got all your other schema. Now this schema, I, I don't, I've not got, I've not gone in and thought, wow, I'm, I'm going to make the best schema in the world here. I used Patrick's tool. I searched Locksmith um, Manchester. I picked out five keywords or four keywords, pulled in all the URLs and just stole all their schema. What I've done is gone through each one. So if you click on the web page schema, that would have just had location URL, short code. And then the web page word on the end. If we're going to the locksmith schema, you can see it tells them what type of payments we take. Cheap sheep locksmiths in Manchester, uh, Portal Manchester Northwest M2, and that'll date change dynamically on the on the magic page. Right. Next next section that we're going to look at is the schema for your magic pages. So I'm going to scroll. I'm going to go on to one of the magic pages, make sure I'm on one of them. Right, now when I do the schema on these, right, what, what we tend to do is, is a good example. If I go to the home URL, first of all, of this, 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 this site here. Okay, this is a services site because we're moving from Spain over to Dorset. So I've started a little website project, which I'm going to create. And as you can see, it's just dorset.services. Pulls in a few little, um, a little bits and bobs. And then there's some of the services, because I'm going to go out picking car locks and doing stuff like that for a laugh while I'm over there, because I, I enjoy breaking into stuff. If I click on the services, that'll take us to the dorset.services forward slash locksmith page. Okay. Now, if you look at the locksmith page we've got on here, you can see it says Dorset. So what I've done on the home page is I've used the actual county of Dorset. And then when we click on the page and go through to the magic page, Malcolm Regis. So the, the home page is actually Dorset rather than it being the same one. What I tend to do if I've got the, say, say for example, the home page is London, then what I do is I 301 redirect um, and I can create a video to show you how to do that. It's really, really simple. I 301 redirect the London page into the home page so that we're not got two London pages on the same website. Um, that, that's a little bit more of an advanced feature and, and I can demo that shortly if needed. But what I was going to say, so, so, if, so if you go onto the magic page and you're doing the schema, you click on edit magic page. 
scroll down you don't need to go so advanced with the schema inside of the magic page so you've got an option here you can have advanced schema builder which will open a schema builder almost the same as the schema tool which changes dynamically throughout the website for you or you've got one that's a simple schema builder here now if you open that as you can see it's all short codes throughout everywhere other than this one here which i'll go over to my next field copy that and we'll paste the x field short code in there and then we paste the x field email in here so this will change dynamically based on the site and then price range but as you can see most of this map places location latitude longitude is already taken care of for you so you don't necessarily have to go too far with all this so if you're only open five days a week now let me just go up to the top because obviously we're not going to have local business let's see if we've got a property schema in here That'll do. I'm not, I can't be. Um, if anyone's seen it, he's probably screaming at it now saying he's missed it. Real estate agent. There we go. Boom. Okay. Then you add, you see this bit here that says SEO image URL. What you have to do is you have to upload an image to this. Doesn't matter what image you, you well, it does. I tend to buy all mine from Shutterstock, but it's totally up to you guys where you get your images from. I'm not going to put in a relevant image for this. I'm just going to put in a save.png and click update. Now, doing that, just by switching that little thing on inside the magic page, that will automatically create a schema for your magic page. So this bit, this has been the most complicated part, but as you can see, you can add schema to pretty much any website in, in a matter of minutes. Okay, so we've got real estate schema, and as you can see, everything's already dragged in, even the image URL, okay, the article served, there's the email address that we added before, there's the phone number we added inside the X field, London, London, EC2V8, and so on and so forth. You've even got the geolocation data being pulled in there for you. That does that automatically, or you can go in it and create more advanced schema and do it the same as you've done with the homepage, import it and create all your dynamic areas served and stuff like that. And it will change on an ongoing basis throughout. Does everybody understand where we're up to so far? Has anyone got any, whoa, can you use X fields? I understand how to handle the content, right? Yep, you guys have got the content. Keith is always provides it SSL. Do we need to do the SSL step? No, you don't, SR. How do we pull local info? Of Wikipedia into the MPP. Okay, so local information for Wikipedia. That's a good. That's a good question. Okay, so what I do with that is I'm getting lost where we are now. Let me close some of these down. Structured data. Okay, guys. So if you want to pull in local data, edit your magic page again. Right. So what we do is. Wikipedia real estate. Yep. So this is going to be a Wikipedia real estate page. And if you want to add this in, pull this in via your schema. Go in here, scroll down to the bottom. Say what I add to. Paste your real estate one in. That's relevant for every every location. And then you can just type in in fact, you probably could just do it here. I'm going to pull up the Manchester page, okay? I'm going to go up there, en.wikipedia. I'm going to go over here, paste that into there. And I'm going to change the word Manchester to location. And then I'm going to click update. Now you can do you can do that exact same link you've just created as well on your page if you want if you wanted to link out to it so um i think that might be what you were talking about so i'll do that as well while we're on open the simple schema builder grab the link yep edit with elementor it doesn't matter where i put it does it so 
let's just go in here. Oh no, I'm not going to do it there because I'd have to. Yeah, well, sorry. So obviously, if you want to add it in here, you have to know how to type the code for the for the for the link. Do you? I might actually do one there. Looking at it, I don't know is the answer, so I'll just put it in here. So local information, and then ahref equals. Right, obviously you do this by adding your links where you add your links into your content. I'm it might work if we add it down there, but I don't know for definite, so I'm just doing the code. And you just pop in the link with the location tab on it. Click update. And then view page. And what you're going to see is local information. And you can put the location short code on there if you want. What we aren't, we're on the London page. So when I click that, that should take us to Wikipedia London. There we go. And if we come back out of that page, was that a magic page we were on then? I don't know. Yeah, it was. So we're going to now look at Barbican, Barbican, which is an area in London. If there's a Wikipedia page, it'll pull you into it. Okay, so that links out to that. But then if you go in and you view the schema we've just done, You've also just pulled in, there you go, Wikipedia, e Barbican, real estate, same as information's been dragged in there. Um, there's, there's much more advanced ways of doing this with, with the other schema tool, with, with the when you, when you import the schema, but it's, it's probably a full video in itself going through all that, so I'm not going to go too in depth, because what I want to do before we jump off here is I want to actually import this website and change it to a different location and just show you exactly how awesome it works once the site's actually built and done. I'm just looking, okay. Is there a way to use this plugin in the affiliate marketing? I am not in the local marketing. Uh, yeah, we've got quite a lot of people who use it for affiliate sites and what they do is like um, sell products that have got local search. So uh, an example would be like um, a white goods retailer, where to get a cheap washing machine in location, where to get a cheap um, bike, things like that. And then what a lot of people do is link out to, for example, Amazon um, products. So say you're doing a, a, a mountain bike on Amazon. And then the first thing you do is when they get to your web page, it pops up and says two hour delivery. Because in most areas now you can get two hour delivery. Have it at your door, free delivery within two hours. Click it. As soon as you click it, it's actually free to the Amazon site. And obviously they buy a bike on Amazon or they buy a different bike on Amazon or whatever they buy on Amazon in the next 24 hours you get paid on. So there's a lot of people doing that and using it for affiliate sites. Um, doesn't the scraper have to be edited to match our evergreen new MPP site? It certainly does, yes, Edward, but I've not gone through and edited that. So what, what I can show you is if we go inside here, and if you view, let's view the schema in the back of the home page of this site. Oh, I've got inside the, one second, and I'll show you what how, how the schema looks inside. So what we do, is when we create the schema inside of our websites, we do what we do with the content. We use the short codes everywhere. As you can see, look, see the top of this one here? We've got location, we've got county, we've got region, we've got zip, we've got country. Scroll down a bit, you've got your organization section, then you've got your short code that says blog info in brackets name, blog info in brackets name, blog info in brackets URL, and you've got the URL short code, and all your short codes are listed up here in the help section. Okay, that'll, then there's explanations to what they do on the right there. So you go through and you pull in things. Because I've got founding date, I don't want it the same on all of them. 2014, 15, 16, 17, and 18, I've spun it. Contact point, contact support, X fields number, as you can see there. Um, URL and a hashtag website. Cheap, best, number one, uh, space, locksmith. And then I've spun it so it's got an S on the end and not on the end. Then I've done the in, and then I've left a pipe with a gap, so it'll do in and not in location. Location or locksmith is the name of the business, so that stays the same throughout. URL, and then it's got the search term string for the target. And that'll automatically pull the URL in. URL is the URL. So as you can see, what you do is you whip through here and you create the schema using the short codes and spun content. So the schema is going to change dynamically on every single page that we've added it to. So as it says in the bottom of the page that we're currently on, on the, on the work through tab, add highly spun content to all pages clone the website okay now i'm going to do this using wp migration so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go into the site that we're currently looking at 
which is this locksmith in Manchester site here. That's got all that spun content. It's got all of these location specific areas down the bottom. So what I've done is I've followed the rules on this tab. Okay. Now, if I go through every single one of them, we're going to be sat here for a few hours. So that's probably not what everybody wants to do. So change all the colors to match your color scheme, leave the main content sections completely blank, change all pre-added content to my content, use short codes from MPP and short codes where possible. I've put all of the instructions in there. And if you follow through each of the instructions, it's going to show you exactly how to do it. Um, but the key is using the short codes and using the, uh, the, the tags that you can import. Okay, that, that's, that's the key to it. Everything, don't put location specific information anywhere. You wanna be using spun content and short codes throughout the whole site. Right, so we've got a site here that's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 service pages. If I click on any of them service pages, they're all Manchester based, okay? If I click on one to go to one of the magic pages, you can see they're all based in Manchester, they're all around Hume, and there is spun content. There's Old Trafford, that was Ardwick I seen there. So this is a Manchester website, okay? Right, so what, what, what we would do now is if we've got this site here and we want to use this as our, as our, oh, I forgot what we call it, our, our evergreen website, okay? So we've added everything into it, we've added all the content, we've put all the spun text, we've added all the short codes, when you look in the back end, everywhere is short codes. Okay, so you've got your short codes, location specific, location specific. You've got region specific home pages. Throughout the content is all spun, as you can see. Right, so we're going to then go in, and this is this is how quick and easy we can import this to another website. So we go into here, and we click on the export button. It might take a couple of minutes to do this. Go over there and we click file. So what we're going to do now is export this to a file. Now let's say this one that we're doing over here on the left hand side is wherever, Liverpool, London, it doesn't really matter where it's going to be for. Right, and what, what that's going to do, that's going to export this current file and download it over here. I'm going to stop the export at the same time or, or would the people want me to just wait and let it do it? Right, so it, it, it creates a file, lots of Manchester, yeah. We click on it and we let that download. It should take a couple of seconds, it's 141 megabytes, okay? Step number two, we go back over to the site that we've got previously. Okay, so I've kind of gone through all the rules and everything. I can see someone's mentioning about maps. I will go through all that and show you shortly, don't worry. Um, right, so we can close that. We go back to the site that we're currently working on, yep. I click here and you click on import. Click from file and I'm going to go over to downloads and I'm going to click on the file that I've just created. And what it's going to do, it's going to upload that. Now it might take a couple of minutes because 141 meg and we're also streaming live to you guys, but I've got 600 meg so it should be pretty quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly run through and just show you the process when you install a new website. Just going to answer some. All right. I'm reading your questions, guys, while you're doing this. All right. Is there a way to use the plugin for affiliate? Yes, I've just answered that one. Three minute break. Sorry, Brian. Scraped schema have to be edited to match. It's okay. Did the breadcrumb schema have to replicate the actual breadcrumb content on the site, or can we add any of our most important URLs? I don't know, Kevin. To be totally honest, I tend to use the service pages inside the breadcrumb schema uh, because it makes more sense. But if you wanted to use whatever the important URLs on your website are. Then yeah, there's no there's no reason you'd need to just add every single service page. You can add whatever you want in there, really. Um, I, I probably would maybe avoid adding external URLs, but that's probably for more of a schema expert to answer than, than myself. How long will it take to rank brand new domains in local cities? Rank high domain attached to maps list. Right, I've I've built about 
seven or eight sites yesterday and some of them are already ranking but then i've also got sites i built four weeks ago felix that's taken that's still only on page four page five and we're starting to build backlinks to them to try and push them up um and, and, and other things like connecting them to entities like gmbs and images and um people famous people in the industries and stuff like that um if you connect your sites to, to to entities and i'm hearing a lot more now i mean clint butler's on tonight so he's he's probably a much better SEO, a lot of better seo guy than i am um he'd probably know a lot more than i would but connect I, I, what, what i'm finding and what i'm seeing is that connecting it to entities so um it's like a, like a noun like a person a place or a thing and linking that to your site it tends to give you an seo boost um are branded domains better to use for these sites or would mixed niche keyword branded domains be better for seo um all right let, let me let me give you an example okay because there's a lot of argument about this okay but i use all sorts of different uh oh what oh, smiths echoes all okay so that's auto locksmiths manchester uh that's mike's mobile locksmiths that's the car key group that's locksmith sheffield.net that's precision locksmiths so uh, where's i'm not seeing many of the um he used to work for me that guy car locksmith sheffield or oh, locksmith.org i'm not seeing many non non-area specific domains when we're going through and looking at stuff like that so basically to answer that question obviously no no one knows the, the 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 exact answer whether it works much better or not but what i tend to do to answer that question is i'd go and type in a keyword and just look that one's got locksmith manchester in it that one's got manchester locksmith in it that one's got lock force but then he's he's, he's forward slash urls of locksmith manchester that one's got manchester locksmith in it that one says locksmith at the beginning find a locksmith arc locksmiths I'm assuming it's got another URL bit at the end. Lock right Manchester. So what I would say is, if you do a keyword research and have a look that way, 90% 90, 90 of URLs tend to have the, the keywords you just searched in the URL. So that would tell me that it is important for ranking purposes. Right, okay, so we've imported site over here. You see me click finish a minute ago. Um, I'm just gonna quickly pause my screen whilst I what i would do is click refresh i'm just going to log into the url that's all okay let me just show you first so what you should be able to see now is the url okay it looks identical to the previous url we were just looking at which was the manchester one here so what we've just done is we've downloaded this and then we've uploaded it to this url over here evergreen demo so all that stuff i've just created is completely broke now because we've added this then what i'm going to do is i'm going to log in and then click login okay now what's going to tell me to do because i've used element pro it's going to ask me to reactivate my license so what i'll do is click over here click disconnect connect and activate if you just use normal elementor i don't think it does this anymore it might it might you might need to connect it to your free account right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over to settings i'm going to pause the screen because i think my my api key will show up like i've said i've used my specific api key because i'm showing you i'm just going to hide that first okay right and i'll click play now that's been hidden right so as you can see we've gone over to the magic page settings page yes then what we're going to do is we go to our databases and let's say okay we, we just added the manchester website here because we've cloned the manchester website yep but we don't want a manchester website right so i'm going to uninstall that region completely and let's say we want a birmingham website yep so we're trying to create a Birmingham website for our client here. That's in the West Midlands, isn't it, Keith? 
what I'd do is you can go into <laughs> here and click choose a county. Okay, so so we what West Midlands, which it should have Birmingham in it, I would believe. So let's click West Midlands and then click apply filters. And that's got 615 locations. I'd never build a site that big. So then what I'd probably do is unclick that, go over and click B percentage thingy. And if you click wave over that, it shows you that anything with a zip code beginning B percentage, it will automatically import that. So what I'll do is click apply filters. Now we've got 600 locations. So I'll go back to the filters and say, okay, well, don't give me any locations with less than 10,000 population. So minimum population is 10,000. Now we've got 88 locations. That's a bit more realistic for you for, for a first site to start getting ranking and working. And you can increase locations over time. But what I recommend doing is doing 70 or 80 pages, not even that, um, and then starting to build up a little bit of traffic and a little bit of rankings. And then as you start to add more locations in more areas, they will rank better. If you go for too many locations straight away, it doesn't work the way it used to. And anyone that tells you it does, they're full of shit. Because what will happen is you'll build a 5,000 page website. You'll see all these sites get these pages get indexed, and then three months later they're all the indexed. Um, so you, you unfortunately you have to put a little bit of work in these days, right? So we've done that. Then we go back over to the magic page. We click on edit, as so we've just install installed the thing, and as you can see, we've got all the the spun content in the name of the page and everything. So what this is now going to do is just going to verify our license, and what we're going to do is go over to the central location and type in Birmingham. It's going to pull in the pages. We're going to click update. Now, if we just install this onto a client site and we think, ah, actually, no, this is a guy's site, but he's got a different phone number. The number we had previously was that. Or well, let's say, okay, we don't want that number. We want 0121-777-6767. Click save. Okay, so remember, this is what that site looked like before. And we go back and we go... Right, I'm going to make sure it doesn't have any errors here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the permalinks first and I'm going to save it twice. Then I'm going to go back over to magic page settings just to be on the safe side and I'm going to go delete spin text cache. Okay, and then click save. Then I'm going to go to the home page and we have a Birmingham website. Okay, every single page in the whole website, Solihull, Redditch, Tamworth are all listed on the home page. Come down here, car key duplication. That's going to be car key duplication, Birmingham. Okay. Then all of the local listings, all of the pages, everything relates to Birmingham. If we click on one of the magic pages, my internet's been a quiet again. Right, for some reason it's not loading up so what i'm going to do is just go into diagnose the page we're currently on and jump in and show you the schema and what you'll see is the schema inside the one we've just we've just imported dorset.services evergreen demo as you can see it's pulling in the correct url as you can see it's pulled in edge baston west midlands b15 uk it's got the opening hours so what it'll do is it'll pull in all the geolocation data for the Birmingham website. So now what we've got is a unique Birmingham website. Oh, I think the pages were loading, weren't they? Selly Oaks. Just took a while. Now we're going to the Selly Oaks page because I've just shown you the Edge Baston one. And what you're going to find is if you go in here, click, click on the schema, and it's all going to be location specific for that particular location because what happens is the short codes attach themselves to the central location and the whole site. Even as you can see, the maps URL there, it's got Selly Oaks and it's got the longitude and latitude in it. It's got your longitude and latitude and geolocation data down here. Um, Wikipedia page, Wikipedia locksmithing, Selly Oaks, and that'll be a Wikipedia wiki data page that's pulled in. And then we go home, every single page on the website is now part of a Birmingham website. Okay, so this is now a Birmingham website. Now, if I wanted to upload this to a different website, just to show you the power of this really, really quickly. Go into settings. We go over to the Magic Page database. And I'm not even going to bother on installing Birmingham. I'm just going to go over to filters, get rid of the L, M, put in L for Liverpool. Oop, put in L for Liverpool. 
So it's, and that's only going to use zip code starting with an L. So Northwest, we've got 637 locations. Like I said before, I'd never do it with that many. I'd, I'd apply filters and make it shit smaller. But let's let them 637 locations apply. And we'll come down here and click continue. And we go over to delete spin text cache. And then you go up to the magic page. So the longest bit is important in the website, okay? So as you can see, we've still got Birmingham in there as a central location because we never deleted the previous database. But now we go in, let's type in Liverpool. Let's do 30 mile radius so we don't pull in the Birmingham pages. And then let's click update. And go to the home page. And what you now got is a Liverpool site. And what you've now got, if you go down at the bottom, car key repairs, you've got Liverpool Auto Locksmiths and all of the Liverpool pages and all of your internal pages, Elm Park, Topstuff, Kirkdale, Anfield, Sandhill. So basically what you do is you create one evergreen website. That's all you need to create is one high quality evergreen website. Spend the time on the content, spend the time with the short codes, spend the time putting effort in with, with this one particular website because this one website, could be used hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and every single time it's completely unique okay it will spin it will work and you literally then are in a situation where you've just seen me do it in five minutes where you download the site upload it to another url change the central location and you have a different location website that's just as good quality as the one you had previously and all of the schema will change and all the back end will change and all the geolocation data will change and these sites rank and they work now every single user that I've spoke to all of our high-end users. When I go into my server, I can see people who've got three and four and 500 websites. The guys that are making the really, real big money using Magic Page plugin are using this method. They're going through the evergreen site model. They're not building individual websites every single time and creating a site from scratch, a site from scratch, because what you can do with this is you've got 120 major cities in the UK. You build one evergreen website that takes you, let's say from scratch, with research, a week to build. Now that, that's a long time. If you're spending a couple of hours a day on it, you'll have an amazing website by the end of the week. You can then add that to 120 major cities across the whole of the UK in maybe three hours. And every single one of those sites is gonna be completely unique. And then all you need to do is go into your magic page and start using your dynamic backlink builder and pushing your pages up the rankings. Um, and obviously you're going to create other links like I did I did, um, I did a site with Michael Bowles recently where it got de-indexed and he got me to page one of Google in a few weeks um, and we're still ranking there now we've been there let's just have a look oh, oh locksmiths Liverpool and we probably get four or five jobs four or five jobs a week off this there you go number one in Liverpool oh, locksmith Liverpool click on that and you'll recognize the site straight away okay it's the same site we've just added over here in Birmingham and we've just changed to Liverpool. It's the same site we've just added here in Manchester. It's the same site that if I go over and I type in oh, oh, Locksmith London and we scoot down, not that one. There we go, oh, oh Locksmith London. Click on that, it's the same site. This works, the rank. It, 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 it works now if people are having trouble or any any issues or you've got any questions now what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass these over to keith guys and then what i'm going to do is before once keith's finished going through his stuff then because he's got some real high level stuff to show you um which i, I don't understand and then that will ledyard's going to come on after keith um and they're going to go through some advanced stuff then what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer every single question. So I don't care if I'm on here for another four hours. Um, I'm going to answer every single question that you guys have got. So there's going to be no questions left unanswered. And if anything you want demoing, hang about. And then when you're asking your questions, if you refer to me, you refer to Keith, or you refer to Daryl in your question, say Daryl this or Keith this or Mike that, we know then who you're talking to. And obviously we can all answer the questions individually for you. And go through it until all the questions have been answered. I don't know how long the other two guys can stay on for, but I'll stay on until every question's been answered. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you control, Keith. Is that all right, mate? Okay. Yep. I've just been yeah. answered. I've answered a lot of the questions. It's been in there, but obviously you can go over. 
I read you. All oh, right, have you been have you been thinking them? Right, I'm yeah. making you present the board. Um, right, uh, right. Share my screen. Now, yeah, share uh, your screen. Share my screen. Let's. Hang on, let's shift this go. Oh, wrong one. Get rid of that go to webinar. How the hell do I get rid of the go to? Oh, there you go. Right, guys, this is the first time I've used go to webinar, so bear with us. <laughs> Can everybody see my screen? Can we have a yes or can you see my screen, Mike? I can see a picture of you naked, mate. What have you done? Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, wrong best, screen best control, um, Petersburg, Florida. Yep. Yep, yep, we can see your screen. Right. So, as some of you know, I'm creating a course which will go along with this, and pest control is what I've picked. So, this is going to be the theme for it, Sergeant. I've actually put this on a, just a demo site um because i only put the other sites up at the beginning of the month um but people complain about them not getting like sort of indexed well like i say beginning of this month my sites went up so exactly as like sort of mike just showed well all the sites look like this basically that's it that's my base theme and every site looks exactly like that um and in one area at this moment in time, I've actually got a video and two sites on page one. So, and they're not even four weeks old. The reason I think I get my sites indexed so quickly is two things one, videos, yeah, and two, schema. And you're going to see when Mike said, like, sorry, you know, about X fields and things like that. Well, this is my X field. It starts there, and and this is why I want the mic to get something to import them. Because I'm still scrolling. There you go. It's down to there. So as you can see, I use X, X fields for everything. Yep, yeah, I've got a phone number. I've got like the subheading on there. Is it an X field if I want to change it? Um, got the call, your know, button text. This is for me video schema. Yeah, and I'm going to show you why I use these as well. Okay, because there's a big, big reason why I use these. Because one thing with X field is you can link them to what you call these location sets. And these are bloody powerful. And especially one for putting videos on and one for like sort of your schema, especially if you've got your know, like GMBs, because in your schema you can put the link from the Clearwater page to your Clearwater GMB. You can put the link to your St. Uh, Petersburg page to St. Petersburg. And that's what I'm going to go through like sort of tonight. And also how to put other content on the pages that is relevant to them actual areas so like i say this site is just set up i think i've only put about 20 locations in it i think i just did the yeah i only did the the major areas of like sort of you know the florida and it pulled up 20 locations so i just pull them up so there's the locations you know st petersburg clearwater they're about the only two I know. Yeah, and them ones there. Oh, of course, Miami, yeah. That one's in Florida, isn't it? Okay. So if we go back to the page, as you can see, I've got St. Petersburg on video on there. Now, this bit's a heading what I created. So I couldn't have the video on that heading because it wouldn't change. So when you go into scroll down, clear water. Yeah. I've took this is my magic page. So I've changed my magic page around slightly and I've took the video off there, but I've put the video in there. Yeah. So very similar page. So I've got the map at the bottom, got this, you know, other locations. Now, normally, this other locations, you know, would be like locations around Clearwater, and then I'd have my major cities down here. 
Um, I'll go over that in a bit more detail, like in the course about what I do on this. But like sort of, you know, just because I've only got 20 locations on here, that's why they're showing up exactly the same. Okay, so as you can see, if I go into Tampa, So we're now in Tampa, scroll down. We've still got St. Petersburg video, which is not very good. Okay, we've got a Tampa map on. Yeah. Okay, so how do we get it so that we've got the schema? Oh, let's go to the, the schema. How do you get the schema on? I'll do it my way, it's easier. I don't have to do it on that one. Right. So there's your schema. It's obviously got video objects. Oh, my business has got an error room. Actually, the schema description is not done. Okay, I'll sort that one out. And a URL is missing. That's because I've just copied this across today. Never mind. But you've got local business. As you can see, we've got additional type in there, pest control, tamper, you know, and that, that one will come down to, that one will actually be St. Petersburg, but I'm, I can change that with a, so like I say, I've just copied this one across today. But then I've got like sort of your area served. Like I say, that needs a description in, I obviously haven't got that right. I can sort that out quite easy. And I needed one for the URL, okay. Well, another thing it's got is video object, pest control St. Petersburg, did it, did it, all St. Petersburg stuff. Okay. So let's go back in. So I know I've got a video for Clearwater. Let's go back in and let's find the video schema. Well, first off, let's do the location set. The new location set. Now I always put in what it is so it's clear. Water. I'm going to do two mile radius. Yeah. And that's it. So in there. Clear. Water. Pulls it up. Radius from location. Two miles. How many locations do I want? I'll do 10. It won't pull 10, so it'll probably be about three, I would think. And save location. So there's only one. Oh, yeah, because I've only got a uh, major city done on that. And obviously, the only one's going to be Clearwater. Okay, so I've got that location set, so I need to copy that. All right, now finally, video. So, video ID. Edit. Uh, so look, that one, 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 and that one. All right, I want all of them. Save all my video stuff. So add a custom location. Bang that in. Add a custom location. Put that in. Add a custom location. Now, I think I missed some there. Uh, uh, Spare with us while I do this, guys. Okay, so got all them in. I'm just going to copy me stuff across. I've got me data over here. Ah, but it won't. Uh... 
How do you get rid of the uh, question box? Oh, I was talking to you when we mic off then. Just press the little X on the top left hand side of it. All right. I didn't know whether that would actually close it all together. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> you can open it afterwards and then click the orange arrow and that'll just shut it down on your page so you've got a tiny little box there. It was over everything that wouldn't bloody do. Like video title. Oh, that goes in there. Save that one. This one, all I do is I just do that. Save that one and change that. Yeah, more there. Save that. Now these obviously you need to keep them in the same format. So I just copy that. Copy that. Copy that. And then you need like the video ID. And the video ID is the you know after the watch equals question mark. That's your video ID. Them characters. So I'll put that in there. Save it. Then I need to put it in there. Save it. And put it in there. Save it. And put it in there. And save it. And then the time or date uploaded. As you can see, that. Um, St. Petersburg one was updated on the 8th of the 1st. This one was updated on 29th of the 12th. Save that one. And all these videos are all the same videos. That's 44 seconds. They're just slightly changed. Right, so I just use Content Samurai or Vietnam or whatever it's called these days. Keith, so, uh, yeah. You just give me an idea there. You see where you've just been putting the the post date time URL thing in there? So yeah. If we had a short code that pulled in that information like we've got on the schema tool. Would that make stuff like this a lot easier? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. Sorry, I'll shut up again. I just just give me an idea and, and and a thought. I can I'll speak to my developers about it. That's all. Okay, mate, I'll shut up. Yeah, that'd be cool. Save me a lot of time. So I'm just going to copy this. Oh, actually, no, I've got. Uh... Oh, I haven't got this thing. I'll just copy that. And I'll just change this to. You know what? Uh, I think there's a one at the end in there. Clear water, save that. And obviously the keywords. I'll show you why I'm using these as well. Um, copy that. Oh, copy that as part in there. I didn't even change that one. Let's give you a clue as to one of my sites what I've got on <laughs> Some of you will have seen this before because I've shared this uh, idea in the group before. And you'll have the schema is in the group as well. And if you haven't seen it before, then it's all on St. Clearwater. It's all on like sort of your my site. So that's like sort of one thing you can do with it. Okay. So before I update that, because I showed you the tangle one before, didn't I? Uh, go back here. Clear water. So this is a clear water one. I haven't done updated yet, so this should come out with all St. Petersburg stuff. 
Okay, so video object. So it's got pest control St. Petersburg in. And obviously it's got all the local business in for St. Petersburg, the, the, you know, all that. Now, where's Mike says he doesn't use the advanced schema for his magic page, I still do. Um, and if we open it, as you can see, these I'm going to put these into like sort of X fields as well. But I've got your X field schema ID, X field city region zip, location, the area served, the description, the email, all of them work perfectly. Yeah. And even I've got like sort of you know, your map URL, YouTube channel blocks. Or, because you know, you can have a YouTube channel for Bananas County, you can have one for um, St. Petersburg, you'd have one for wherever. So you can put all of them in simply by using the X fields and the location set. So if we put in uh, what kind of change, it'll be nice and easy if you can see. Well, I haven't got X field schema description, did I? That was missing. So close that. Let's find schema description. This is why I wanted a, a pull in. An import function. <laughs> That's when I'm copying, I tend to forget it. Okay, so this is a schema description. So this is the schema description for St. Petersburg, etc. Okay, so that one will be on everything. Then if we edit it again, add a new location, go to the bottom, copy that, put that in there. Save that. Okay, so we're going to have a different scheme and description. Update. So then, if I now go into St. Petersburg. So, scroll down. I've still got the video for St. Petersburg. Yeah, that's all I've changed. Well, I haven't changed anything on St. Petersburg. Bang that into the data testing tool. If you go into local business, there we've now got the schema description. This is the schema description for St. Petersburg, etc. And obviously the video object is still St. Petersburg. If I now oh, where we are, change that to say Tampa. Still got the St. Petersburg video. So you've still got all the St. Petersburg in there. And you've still got the schema description for St. Petersburg. If I now change that to Oh yeah, water.
So video, we've now got pest control clear water in, and if I now go to here, and hit clear water, now scroll down, boom, you've got a new video, pest control clear water. And all the structured data is for pest control clear water. And if we go into local business, this is a scheme for clean water only. So that's two things what you're going to do. The third thing is even better because, oh, I'll show you the um, video, why I use the keywords. I get there it. Oops. This is what Mike was on about when he's on about spinning. That's the title. So that's how spun that title is. Yeah. And obviously that's me text. And all of that is spun text. Images are spun on the page. I mean, I've already got three there. Sometimes I'll have six or more. You know, I don't use any of like the images or you know, like sort of your video object, your image object, your video object. All I use is text. And um, basically, I put everything in so I can spin it. And that way, you know, every one of my pages is completely unique or as near as damn it unique, anyway. So, there still. So, in there, as you can see, I've got your normal schema description, your schema, your schema for video. All of the X fields are in there, but then when I come to actually display the video as well, I've got my YouTube normal URL, but then I've got the X field video ID at the end. But then, also inside oh, which i haven't on that one normally inside the iframe i will actually have the actual title of the video uh, which would be x field video title and then i've got video keywords in between the iframe so that just gives it in fact let's put it in so just do title equals yeah and then it would be X field underscore uh, measure that so you got there so that so when that comes out you know, inside that iframe, you've got the title and you've got the keyword, which the title's got the keywords in as well. So you're giving Google a lot of keywords for that. So update that. So now what we're going to look at is a scroll down. Okay. As we've got here, we've got like sort of all the links which go to our different pages. But say we want to put something on, because in some niches it's like difficult to like sort of rank. So you want something a bit more to make your know, relevance your your page, to make our page more relevant. So in this bit here, we're okay, well, I've got the cities there. I'm just going to put the zip records we cover in location. Include and what you call now. Obviously, you don't just need to put zip codes in this. 
Okay. You include Exfail City info. So update that. So if I now go in and find my stuff, so St. Petersburg zip codes. Put them in there. Add a custom location. Now, obviously, I'd have all of me areas set out, the whole lot of them. And clear, I've got a few. So, St. Petersburg starts 33701 and Clearwater starts 33755. So, if we save them, update the page. I did save that, didn't I? Yeah. So, if we go back, it's in Petersburg. Scroll down. And why it doesn't show the uh actual move scars at the dashing for I've got data in. Yeah, I might know something to go wrong on a webinar. So try refreshing that. I'm just glad it happened to you. <laughs> what a chuff. Oh, it's after nine o'clock, so I can't say that. <laughs> That's not. <enough. laughs> Actually, city info. Actually, let me start city info. Copied. Update just to make sure. I'm in text. Include actually. Ah, that's why. Why did that happen? Got some crap there. Some text and thinking. That's better. It'll work now. I must have had some rubbish in. So now, if I refresh. Hey, there you go. So the zip codes we cover in St. Petersburg include 33701, or two, or three, or four, or five. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Now, if I go to Tampa, you're going to get exactly the same zip code because Tad didn't do a an X field for Tampa because you've got Petersburg and you've got the same one. But if I've got clear water, thirty-three seven fifty-five, thirty-three fifty-six. So this is where somebody was on about you know using Wikipedia data and stuff like that. So you can put anything in there. You could put like sort of your your good places to visit in. Um, I mean, another one which I was going to do, 
laws, you know, you can put text in, which is like, you know, Clean Water is a city located in Pinellas County and that sort of thing, which all makes it relevant to that area and just gives you that added bit of boost if it's in a, you know, a hard to rank area. And that's my thing for, if there's any questions, I don't know if there's any, because I can't see the questions in there. There's quite a few, maybe. Oh, Keith, yeah. before you start asking questions, I'll let Daryl show what he does, because he's got something to do with link building and ranking, I believe, some of the crazy stuff he does. And then what we'll do is we'll okay, that's answer, cool. answer all the questions at the end between us, if we've got people left on at the end. Um, if Daryl's still here, that is, let me just check. Yes, I am here. Ah, cool, you've, you've jumped in and took over. I think Keith needs to now make sure. you the presenter. Okay. Right. So how do I do that? I'll wait there. Maybe I can override. One second. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I can't get. I can't even. Oh, attend the dashboard. Oh, pal. I've done it. Daryl, you've been charged, mate. Me and him will shut up. Girl. I just got to right. figure out which screen. Okay, there we go. Let me close. I will mute our microphones. Yeah. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Simple page. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great, great. Well, anyway, I uh, just wanted to say hello. Uh, my name is Daryl Ledyard. I own Ledyard Digital Marketing here in just outside of Syracuse, New York. Uh, we're a small team of uh, under 10 people uh, working on websites for the last so many years. And uh, I actually started my career with my first website, which is actually back in 96. And it was a website that was very similar to what Magic Page does. It had city pages and, uh, you know, basically it was for search engine optimization to come up for various local terms. And so I've been dabbling with this type of model for a number of years, actually. Um, since then, I've probably built, um, you know, dozens and dozens of uh, similar type websites. And then uh, since I've joined on with Mike Martin's uh, uh, magic page plugin i haven't turned back to haven't tried any other ones there's no need for any other ones to be honest um uh, the functionality of it is just incredible what it can do um from the spin tax throughout the website to the uh x codes uh, i'm sorry the x fields uh the spin tax uh fields it's just absolutely very very powerful little tool and uh so you guys are all lucky to be on this call today uh just wanted to Let's see, give you first a little rundown. Mike asked me, can you do a couple little tricks? I'm always experimenting, as he knows. And we get on calls once in a while, and I say, hey, look, Mike, I just uh, discovered this. And uh, he's like blown away, and sometimes he shares some of the things that we talk about. And sometimes we, we talk about things that aren't quite ready for debut yet. We just uh, have to work out the bugs and things like that. Uh, but there are things in the pipeline that are, I think, going to amaze you as uh, things move forward with Magic Page Plugin and Lead Simplify. Uh, <clears throat> I'm on both of them. I also consult on both of them. So if there's anybody that's out there that's kind of confused or needs help uh, through that, uh, I'll tell you at the end of my little speech about how you can get in touch with me. So basically today, I decided to have some fun with um, images. And and how you can use images dynamically inside of your website. You say dynamically, what do you mean by that? Well, we want to take the fields that are in Magic Page and also the spinning ability and allow it to create images to add variety to your page from the HTML standpoint. So that looks good for you from a Google uh, crawl. And for, for a number of reasons, if you understand SEO, it's a good thing to have some dynamic things going on on the site that uh, looks static. It's not just dynamic. It's, it, it's an actual JPEG or GIF file or PNG. So uh, I discovered this little tool. It's called Dynamic Dummy Image Generator. Um, I have a little PDF that I'm going to put in the chat here um, at the end here so you don't have to write it down, but you can if you want to. It's dummyimage.com. And what you can do with this is um, you can make images. Oh, okay, that's great and everything. And then you can write the word in, you know, text. And it will make an image. Like if you right click, you'll see that this is an image um, that is an actual image that says text. 
right? So where we get clever here is when we actually take a short code and we put it in there. And so we're gonna do that. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a niche and a, and a location. Okay, so it'll take city and best day spas, okay? And we're gonna change the size of this. I'm gonna make this about uh, 10 by 200. Okay, all right, so now you've got this going across. It doesn't seem to like that. That's It's getting a little bit of an error, but we're gonna take this here and copy it, okay? Darryl, and we're, yeah. Have you ever tried spinning the sizes? What's that? You see where it says size? Just a question, sorry to jump in, it just, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll I'll get to it. Yeah, that's all, that's coming. You you'll see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So okay, so what we're gonna do here is I'm using Beaver Builder. Uh, that's my favorite um, to use, but you can use Elementor for this as well. And what we're gonna do is we're we're um, going to add. For me, I'm gonna add just this. I'm not sure how it works for Elementor, but we're gonna add it as a URL. We're gonna pop it in here. Okay. So we have location, right? And we have best day spas. And we have the color being black is the background. The foreground is FFF, which is supposed to be white. And then this is the size, okay? So we hit okay. And then we hit publish. And now as we go through, it now says Polk. And if you look at the uh, image URL, it's actually that okay so you can go even further with that okay you can also do an alt tag that would line up with pulk uh, day spas okay so you could do that if you know a little bit of html code you can put that in um in here um we're just gonna do insert from url Okay, and we're gonna do location, day spas. Okay, doesn't need a squiggle, it needs a bracket. Okay, and so we've got that in there and we've, we've got that. So, sorry, I got my dog sitting next to me here. All right, so, that is the second example. Okay, we're just gonna get rid of that. Um, make sure I have this still dynamic. Nope, it's not. Okay. This got a little bit messed up, so I gotta go in and grab it again from here. Okay. All right. So now it should work and it should have an alt tag. So now it says Aurora is best. So, okay. <clears throat> so pretty cool, right? You have you have now an image, you also have alt tag. Uh, you can spin tax the alt tags and things like that. Now, what is also interesting about this, is you can do a few other things because I'm an experimenter. I'm always trying new things. Uh, so, one of the things you can also do here is uh, take your sizes. So what I did was, is I just, before coming on here, I made a few sizes. And then what I'm gonna do is do the two squiggles and then insert in with pipes, these different sizes. You're gonna hit okay. You're gonna save. Let's see if this works. Okay, so now it's that size. You go here, that's that size. Now it's that size. Now it's that size. Now it's that size, whatever, on and on. So you can do that with their sizes. Also with this tool, you can change the colors. Um, so what I did was, and I put this all in the PDF, the same example, so you can use this as a case study for yourself to play with. Um, so if you look at this right here, the second number where it's zero, 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 we're gonna put in squiggly 
open a squiggle, close squiggle. I'm going to paste in the hex codes that I pre-selected. So now we're going to have different sizes and different colors with this. So we got a lot going on here. We got alt tags. We got different colors. There's gray. There's an orange. There's another gray. There's another gray. There's kind of a pink or red. There's a purple, so on and so forth. Now look at that. We got a big one now. All right. So you guys happy there? Should I quit or should I show something else? I'm going to show something else because I'm just that way. So what you can do is go back to this tool. And we're going to change this to this. Okay, 1,000 by 12, right? And we're just going to get rid of everything out of the text. Okay. And we're going to take this code, and I'm going to go with a GIF on this just because I think that they work good for borders. Uh, I just gave away what I'm doing. And so what I'm going to do is using the same um, method, I'm going to insert it, this in. Okay. You can also put in more keywords if you would like into here. And then we're going to do something with those colors again, because I think that that would be fun to do. So I'm going to go into the 000, and I'm going to put a squiggle, close squiggle, pop this in, and I'm going to insert into post. Okay, close this up, hit done, hit save. Now, I believe these will match now, because the way the spin text, yes, it does. Because the way the spin text system works, these colors will match all the way down through. Now, it is having the, the 100 by 12. Maybe there's a, a way that we can get around that. Haven't really experimented with that. Um, maybe I need to put in non-breaking space. No, oh, that's not, that's going to put, yeah. We might have to do something to, to get that around. But that, that that's the whole idea. So, I mean, I, I want you to just think about what you could do with that, where you could have a lot of variety on your pages uh, with the sizes of these graphics, with the actual graphics. Now, there's other ones that also allow you to have images back there. And I've done that before uh, with some services, but then they turned out to be unreliable. And so the URLs changed on their end and then broke all my site. So if, if it's smaller and more, more reliable, um, you know, something like this could work um, quite well. I was going to have another little ditty to show, but I've uh, experimented with it. There's still some glitches in it that uh, I'm going to talk to Mike about um, to, to uh, maybe work out and things like that. But there's a kind of a, a plug in that we found that does some kind of cool things that might be able to help us. So I just wanted to also point out a little project that I'm working on. Uh, Ledger Digital has been doing a number of different services for a while, and we've decided to productize um, some of our services into really scalable types of things. Um, a lot of the work that I've been doing for the years, and I know if you guys do things yourself, if you do things that are very custom, um, it's it's hard to really scale. You're you're just trading time for money, and it's task shifting, and it, it gets to be a little crazy. Uh, so what I did is I started this pro program called Helplify, and Helplify is kind of the hub of some of the services that I would like to offer from Ledger Digital. And um, one of the ones, well, I'll just explain what they are. Um, ConvertiPress is basically a website where uh, will convert whatever you have to WordPress. So if you have like a, a Word document, a Google document, uh, files, you know, whatever, just we're just going to convert what design you give us as it is over to WordPress. There's no designer or anything like that. It's just one-to-one. -one. If you have an old site and it's on archive.org, we can like just convert it over to a WordPress page builder. Uh, loaded WP is just basically a fully loaded stack of... Uh, our favorite plugins that we use, and we get it set up and ready to go and optimized. Um, we can also host it for you, and we can also do support for your you or your customers as well. So if you want to take a look at that, you can. Then we have mass.page, which is a product of 
based on uh, Magic Page plugin. And that's sort of a consultancy where we consult people and help them with their mass page projects. It also, um, we can build city pages on your behalf uh, for you or your clients. So if you're interested in that, just fill out the form at the bottom of the page and we'll get in touch with you. Um, then the other thing is website support, which is uh, our main support channel for all of our other services. And uh, eventually down the road, we'll have an affiliate so that you can sell website support through our team uh, to your customers. But that's about it. I just a little spiel uh, for Helpify. And uh, if you need to reach out to me, I'm in the Facebook group. I uh, jump in once in a while, say hello, and uh, I would love to hear from you. Hello? Yeah. Can you go back to that page where you was a minute ago where you were doing them images? I just want you to try something while I'm on here. Yeah. It's in the right. Can you put the city's short code in there? Put the city short code title version and just see. Try the city's one first. I don't think it'll work because it's going to pull in all the different URLs. But if it does, this is nuts. <laughs> wait, wait. City short code with PNG? No, just, just, yeah, just, well, try it. Yeah, try it. Whatever. Maybe you want to you make the, the image size a bit bigger, maybe 120 or okay. something, I would think. Okay. I don't know what you're thinking, but I will see in a second here. All right. Oh, I didn't do it right. Sorry. I'm going to add as media. You're going to break my site. You're going to break my site, aren't you? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, it didn't work good. Change the size so we can. All right. Well, it it, it doesn't. Let me see. I'll, I'll have to change the type, uh, the height of it. Let's do that to um, 400. Right, let's view. What's that doing? It's cracking like mad. What were you thinking? Right, if you go back to the magic page, click why on don't we just page. do? Yeah, why don't we do the text one? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The titles version. I just wanted to try yeah. the normal city one first. It just come into the head. Then I was thinking, do you know what, mate? This is this is really really super relevant for the images. Oh. Because right, really, so the text, your dynamic. text will take will take like four image four cities. Yeah, and then you could even put and location at the end, so you could have in. Okay. That's it. So you put in like um, got it. Got you it. can help in ding 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 four four cities and location, and it will actually pull in. I'm assuming the four closest locations to to the image plus the location that you're currently on. All right, well, let's give it a shot. Come on. Now you need um, a uh, percentage. No, let me see. I, I just paste that city's current for type CSV straight into the image code on the on the image site. Yeah, I wonder I wonder if these um it's the um, double quote quotes the though. quotes are gonna mess you up, I think, but let's you see. You can change it to single quotes though. Oh you can? Yeah. Okay. So oh but yeah. Then, So I, do I still have that paste in here? Go, go, I go back and do just redo the URL from scratch. Let me just try that. Sorry, guys, we'll get to questions in a sec. I just want to say this. So if you go back to the URL website. Yep, for this one. Yep. Yeah, right. Now just put that new city short code in there and change the double quotes to single quotes inside of that piece of code. Okay. And it changed it to 12 to 400. That might okay. work. That might work. Okay. Let's you take a look. Eyes again. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's 
Let's save it. See. The front you the no, it's not working. But I'm sure I'm sure something like that could be tweaked, and maybe you can make another code that's like location that um, is compatible with it. But that that is um, you know something well, that can be done. Is, what's that? And um, equals. If if you've got open, you've not got an open open double quote after the equals. You see, after the text equals, you've not got the double quote to start the cities. All oh, right. Like yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. That's you true. Change the size so that the height is tall enough. Yeah. That'll work. That I know for a fact it'll work. I just I need to play with it. <laughs> okay. Let's get it up a little taller. Oh, the 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 text got ripped out. Like this, three twenty. Well, I think we should do this after the the call, but it's yeah. Like sorry, guys, this is the sort of stuff we spend hours doing. Um, right, guys, I'm gonna run through any questions. Um. And so is Daryl and Thingy. If you if you've got any questions for me, Daryl or Keith, I can see there's been a lot of questions coming in, but you, nobody's put our names on, so we don't know which questions they are referring to. So if you pop any questions on with either mine, Daryl's, or Keith's, I answered a few of mine after like rethink. So. But if there is any more, I'm quite happy to answer them. Yeah, there's a few people asking about purchasing Magic Page as well. Here, one second, guys. I'll throw a special offer in the in the thing, and then we'll run through any questions anyone's got. I'll pop it into the chat. Right. Um, okay. How is Daryl spinning his images? That's the first question, Daryl, for you. Okay, spinning my images like, like just what we just showed. Actually, these are dynamic images. Um, you could spin them, but we're not doing spinning at this point of the images itself. Um, well, we kind of are, but it's coming from a dynamic source, this dummyimage.com. Uh, one thing I could do is I could post the link to that PDF that I made. It gives everybody everything that I just used. Um, let me just drop it in the chat here. So does everybody see that? I wonder. I just posted that in here. It just basically says it comes from this dummyimage.com. allows you to put in a location and whatever your niche is. Um, you then go in, once you put it into your um, editor, you can start putting these FinTechs um, things in different colors you pick. These are just hex codes. You can put in different sizes. Um, and so you just kind of, you know, make it all show up here. And then the other example I had was more about just a border. And all I did for that was is use the same exact, the key is to use the exact same row here because with Mike's uh, plugin, it, if it selects this one, it'll select it through the entire page. So any row, any col um, column or line that you do with this graphically, um, that will be like a theme change um, for that for that page. Okay, to Tim, does this work with Divi Elegant Element? Yeah, yeah, you can use um, Divi works exactly the same as um, Elementor, pretty much straight out of the box. You need to go over to the settings and, and activate it on the Magic Page, and then you can use it. Um, on Divi, you do have where you put the short codes in, sometimes it will spin, um, but most of the time it will just work. Uh, right, sorry guys, I'm gonna keep going through and answering the questions. Mike, thank you, Daryl, thanks, cheers, Scott. Is Daryl image software free for us or is it offered for safe? 
Um, Daryl, it's free, that, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's um, that's free. Uh, you know, it's experimental. So, you know, if if you decided that you wanted it permanently, that same thing, I would have a developer make it just for you. But um, it's just a way to experiment to show what Magic Page can do uh, with dynamic uh, images. Yeah, I, uh, you think it? Did you say to me the other day you were thinking of releasing a tool that does that? Yeah, there's a few different tools I've been thinking about doing. Um, I might start to do some uh, with my team on their off time. We just have been very busy with other projects and things. So I haven't um, released any, but this is one of the tools uh, among a few other ones that we'd like to do just so that we have it controlled. It would be nice maybe if if Mike Martin would do it because then we could tie it into uh, Magic Page and make it part of the whole thing, you know? But um, then it that that would be, feel more secure about using it on you know dozens of websites because otherwise you got a lot of work to clean up if they break. Right. Yeah. I'll have a chat with my developers um, and I'll show them your little section what you've been doing of this video because then if it's possible to be added in there the way we're looking at this I'm, I'm pretty sure that my guys will do it. It'll just yeah. mean that we have to host the URLs which is not a problem. Yeah, the code, the code for the code for this is all over the place. I'm sure you can get the same code and reutilize it. Yeah, it's on GitHub, so you should be able to get the code and just bind it in. So it right. So my guys should just be a nick it and use it. That's cool. That's what I said. Yeah, that's what I thought as soon as you said it. I'll nick it. <laughs> <laughs> I said find it in, I didn't say Nicky. <laughs> right, Mike, can you use the evergreen process with WP multi-site installations? Yeah, we have had a couple of customers that's had a bit of an issue when they're using it on multi-site, MPP, where the code transfers over and causes a few issues, but it does work, but any, any bugs that would come in, I tend to always keep all my sites separate, I don't use multi-site with it because it's not designed to work with it. Uh, how do we get a magic page for different services at the same locations? Right, if you're doing different multiple services, we've done a lot of testing on this since very first releasing magic page plugin. And what we found is if you have more than one magic page, it's very, very easy to kill the site. And when I'm saying kill the site, what I mean is um, adding one installation and then four or five magic pages, people, now we've got to obviously think about not only the advanced users and people who can say, right, I can build this from multiple locations very, very quickly, and they know what they're doing. So what we find is, if, you, if you're building it with multiple magic pages, it tends to be treated as spam and your sites get dropped a lot quicker. So we've limited it to one magic page per WordPress installation. Now, although, that, let me just take back over the screen. Um, where is, I've lost the, the sharing thing. Oh, I know where I'm going. Sorry, guys. One sec. Right, present that. Right, what I'll do now at the minute, I'm just playing with Daryl's little thing while we're talking, but what I'm going to do is share my screen again. Okay, now that one of the sites we've been working on tonight is this Dorset. Now, as you can see, I'm doing dorset.services forward slash evergreen demo. Right, if we go into the dorset.services site, which was put up a couple of days ago, that there is a standalone installation of WordPress. If it ever leaves. Yeah, I'm going to leave that site, sorry. That there is a standard installation of WordPress, okay? Then when you go down here, you can see we've got two services on there. I've only built one of the pages so far. One's for auto locksmiths, one's going to be for domestic locksmiths, and we have plumbers, roofers, electricians, joiners. You click on that, I've installed WordPress inside the forward slash locksmiths tab. Okay, and then I'll also install WordPress inside the auto hyphen locksmiths tab, and I'll create a manual linking structure between all of the sites so it works perfectly. But every single site is a standalone individual WordPress installation. And what it seems to do is you end up building a home page and a about page and a few services pages and a few additional bits to the site. It forces you to build a more comprehensive website. And what we find is when they're built that way, as opposed to just having multiple um, magic pages on one installation, 
you, you, you're less likely to get your site hit, spam and dropped. So that's the reason we do it the way we do it. Um, like that. So if you do want to do it, you have to do multiple installs of WordPress. If your image is geotagged, how can you connect them to that location? Um, who did the geotagging for the images? Was that Keith or was that? It's me up basically. So all you would do, um, can you drop me the screen again? And I'll just yep. quickly. Once I keep losing where I'm going. One minute, mate. Sorry. I've got two well, screens. Well, well, mate, presenter rights all yours, buddy. All right. Uh, who was it who asked it? I can't see it. I lost it. Oh, Valerie. Oh. Yeah. Uh, on my screen. It's got diamonds. So, oh, oh. so basically, if we go, I'll just use this the city info one again. So let's say. Uh, so our spider friend, he's going to be for St. Petersburg. Hope nobody's scared of spiders. And show him. Uh, which is another smallish one. Yeah, that one will do. I'm not to be bad again. Could you not have chosen a better images? Ah, <laughs> They're horrible. Being a girl. Stop being a girl. <laughs> Stop being a girl. <laughs> so I've changed them. So basically, the spider is obviously Saint Petersburg. So you could have that like sort of optimized for Saint Petersburg, and the termite one is optimized for clear water. And you do save and we do update. And let me jump over here. So zip code is now going to change to a termite. Ah, oh, bugger. That's because I forgot to put the what you need to do is put the uh, image bit on. Like I'm just loading with some code. Like that. I know you can put all the, the governs of size and stuff like that on, but I'm just doing this quick. Obviously, if you don't know. Um, like HTML code like that, then just do a view source and you'll be able to find it. You know, just have a look at that. So if we try it now, there we go. So we've got that one. So if I now go to St. Petersburg, then you could do that one. And that's actually just giving me a bloody good idea. <laughs> because what I'm thinking, we could actually have images which are optimized for clear water, images which are optimized, and we could also spin them by putting them into spin tax show codes, I wonder. Hmm. Oh, I wonder if we could actually, let's have a look. Uh, where's my media library? Let's just try something. So I think these are all put up about the same day, so it should be in the same folder. Uh, so I'm going to 
that. Oh, I'm just, you know, that'll do. So let me see if it. I'm just going to put that in. Edit that. I'm just going to put that in there for now. One more. Right, it's 29.12, pest control image 4, that's 29.12. See if this will work. Sounds a lot. Um, might work, might not, I don't know. But if this works, this would be a bloody good idea, Valerie. Yeah, so St. Petersburg still gets that one. Then Clearwater. Drum roll, please. It works. <laughs> Keeps getting excited. <laughs> Just Next a bit. Oh, that's... Yeah, that works. That's good. Cool. I love that, Barry. Well done. Someone's put where is the PDF from Daryl? Yeah, uh, how do I put it in uh, handouts? I was looking for that. <laughs> I, I um, sent I sent the link. Yeah, it's in the I saw it in the chat. Yeah, it starts with filedn.com. If you go to handouts, click choose file, you should just be able to upload one. Choose file. There's nothing there. It just has yours. Not that yours isn't wonderful. I do appreciate yours. <laughs> Right, wait there. I just spotted your link. Um, you click that. I'm trying to download it to my computer. Oh no, it doesn't work. Oh, has it got bonus tips written on it? Yeah. All right, let me just download that. My downloads. Shift it out of the way. Click save. Go over to here. Custom images tip from PDF help, yeah? Yeah. And guys, that is uploading into the handouts as we speak. Is there any naked pictures or anything on there? That's not my fault. <laughs> it's in the handouts. So the PDF's in the handout. Right. Uh, what's the best advice practice for how to monetize this kind of websites for me like a beginner? When do I start with Lead Simplify? Uh, you don't need Lead Simplify from day one. I mean, but uh, I like to use it to sell leads direct. When I first started, um, what I used to do is I used to make the phones ring. So I'd have the phone ringing 50 times a day or something. I'd answer the phone calls and I used to subcontract the workout. So I'd, I'd give the customers a call over the phone personally. I'd talk to the customer, give them a price. And you can get the price just by ringing around a few plumbers, roofers, joiners, electricians in the area. I'd give them a quotation. And then what I used to do is ring around and find someone to cover the job. And initially, I started off by giving them 60% of the job. So I'd say, my company's taking on a contract job, but our, our locals team's so busy, we can't cover it. Would you be happy to go out and cover this job for us? And we'll give you 60% of the total value of the job. Um, and you end up making five or 10 phone calls. But that's the best way to get started. If you only get one or two or three people signed up, then what you do is get Lead Simplify, move those guys into Lead Simplify, and everything will be automated for you then. So you won't even need to answer phone calls anymore. But that's probably the best way to get started if you're starting out new. Um, is there training for this? Um, oh, yeah, yeah but so. <laughs> there's loads of training in, in, in on the YouTube channel and keeps doing a course shortly. Are these sites capable of using an overlay with the client's site if we want to rent it out? Is the part right here? Let me share my screen again, guys, and I will show you exactly how to do that one second. Um, 8% off. Share the screen. 
Okay, so for example, let me go into this Manchester site here. Yep. So let's say I wanted Dorset.services slash locksmiths to be shown in my specific site. What I would do, let's do it on the magic page so it takes up all these locations. Let's click on the Salford page. My sites are running a little bit slow, right? So you go into edit magic page, right? Keep showing you before how to do it with location sets. But if you go inside here now and you scroll down the right hand side, what you'll see is where's it gone? Create overlay. Yep. Click on create overlay, paste it in there, pull the code out, copy that code from there. Shut that. Go and stick that into the head code and click update. Now, if you only want to sell specific locations, I won't get too advanced with it, but if you wanted to sell specific locations to specific clients, you create um, an X field down the bottom here called overlay, and then you create your location set here, and then you put the overload code in, and it will only show in specific areas. But if I go and view the magic page now, what you'll see is it's actually going to show that Dorset.services site. So we've just overlaid that onto all of the magic pages. So no matter which magic page you hit, you've now got an overlay in place. And there's, there's loads of videos on my YouTube channel that shows you how to do the dynamic overlays and all the rest of it. I'm going to delete that now. So. Um, what's that? Can we update that? Right. Next question is. Based on your experience, does the town with the population of 100,000 people rank easier for not so competitive niches? Um, yeah, I mean, basically, the smaller areas rank a lot easier, but they also get a heck of a lot less traffic. So if you're building sites that you're going to grow over a period of time, what I find best to do is go after the big areas first, build, it, build up the traffic, build up your backlink structures, start to build up where you're connecting out to, where you're linking to, setting up all your schema and everything else. Because then what will happen is once you start to rank for the major cities, um, as soon as you start to add the small locations, because your site's already popular and got quite a bit more power, they will automatically rank without you doing anything other than just adding additional areas. But don't go from like a 200 page website to a 2000 page website overnight. What we have got for the magic pages, Felix, is you see this here, auto install pages over a period of time. So let's say you wanted to do a thousand pages. You click on that and you can delete, choose the option to delete the currently existing pages. And then what will happen is you set it to auto install over the next 30, 90, or let's say 365 days if you wanted. And what could what you can do is your site will just build itself over a year and it will gradually increase in size slowly which in Google's eyes looks absolutely awesome and they really like to see that. So you can build a site once and it's going to be, a, let's say, a 3,600 page website and it could go up by 36 pages a day over the space of a year. I think that's bad maths. Um, but your sites will build themselves gradually. Explain your done for you service at Helpify. Over to you. Um, Daryl, yeah. <laughs> well, th uh, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Brian, for that question. I'll send you the five dollars for bringing that up. Um, basically, the Helplify is the hub for uh, all of our Ledger Digital products. Um, what we do is we're mostly dealing with support and ongoing maintenance for people's websites. But because of my experience with MassPage, uh, we've built you know literally dozens of very high-ranking mass pages. So what I typically do is if you're building it yourself and you're a um, Magic Page plugin owner, uh, I would be happy to consult you. It's not cheap, it's $199 an hour, but uh, I will consult you and usually an hour or two is all you're gonna need to, 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 to really know what you need to know uh, on that end of things. But if you want us to do the sites for you, okay, we have two ways that that kind of works. One is, um, if you're outside business, uh, we will work with you on a monthly basis. Uh, we create pages on a subdomain that we host, 
and uh, we have them optimized and perfected with our methods, and we want to control that. So we have our own hosting, uh, and we work as a C name off of their domain, and we charge a monthly fee for our mass pages. Um, but they they work very well if the site already has uh, some kind of authority. If you are a customer of Mike's, uh, I do give you a discount for us to actually do the work that we do and to hand it over to you. Uh, so see me, go to uh, mass.page and uh, or go message me in the group and uh, we can talk a little bit about that kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, my, my, my goal is to enable the people in this group to do what they can do to uh, put out some good content. And for my general commercial clients, uh, monthly recurring revenue is obviously uh, the desired uh, goal. Cool. Right, GitHub uh, link. Thank you, Scott. I've sent that to my developers already and asked them to have a look at it and see what we can do. So that might be something where we get these dynamic changing images chucked into MPP. I don't know how long it'll take, but I've sent it to him now. So thank you for that link, mate. Um, right, can you show a different example of how to monetize with MPP and when do you decide to build out a website with more locations? I understand that I start with 50 locations. When do I? Right. Um, okay. So, Tommy, the, the main ways we generate an income with these. Now, there's some people that do it with affiliate sites, so they use AdSense and they use um, links to. Um, let me just have a look. Links to. Let's see if I've got a site I can share. I'm just trying to think of one of my affiliate sites. This is one I use as a demo site. Okay, so there's a site with an example where you click on it and you go into it. Click here to see a secret deal. I don't know why it's loading so slow and that takes you to an Amazon affiliate link. Now, I don't know how the page is just taking ages to load because my internet. And so get the best bikes, best bike equipment. And obviously these are things that are sell locally, like exercise bikes. People look somewhere they can buy an exercise bike locally. And you click on it and it'll take it through to Amazon to look at the price. So, so that's an affiliate style way of doing it. Um, another affiliate one would be, I don't know if I've took this site down because it's not making much money. Melon. This might have gone now, this one. Oh, it's still there. Film and vape shop. I've not, not dated it for a long time. So these are all links to Amazon affiliate sites. So you click on one of them and it will take you through to the product to buy on Amazon. So that's that's one way of doing it. You can use um you can also create sites where you where where you have Google AdSense on them. Um I think I've got quite a few in the United States to do that with but I can't think of any of the URLs off the top of my head. And then obviously selling leads direct to local businesses which which we use Link Lead Simplify for because it automates the process. And alternatively subcontracting out for local businesses is an, is another great way of earning money. But there's absolutely loads of ways. I mean, basically, the first step is generate the traffic. Once you've got the traffic coming in, for whatever it is you're interested in, don't go after something that bores the crap out of you, because if you do, you'll quickly get bored of it and you won't want to do it. But if you go after something that, that, that interests you or something you think to yourself, okay, I'm interested in this, or I'm interested in what, what, what you'll do is you build off something like that. Once the traffic starts to come in, get asking questions in the group of how to monetize that specific traffic because there's so many hundreds of different ways of, of monetizing the traffic. But the first step is build the evergreen website and start to push it out to the point where you've got, like I said earlier, if you want to go after every major city in, in, in the UK, there's only 120 really big major cities. So you could create a, a, an evergreen site over a two week period, and then you could build 120 evergreen sites in a day or two, very, very easily especially if you use all the short codes and you follow the little technique that I've shown you tonight and use the PDF, which I gave to everybody. Hope that helps. Right, so how can you build a niche site that is dipped, built out for all cities in all 50 states in the USA? Um, Brian, you go in when you're installing your databases on your site. And let's go to the settings page. Okay, and what you do is you go in when you're installing the databases, you don't go after, um, you don't install the full databases. What you do is you go into your filters and you click filters 
And as you can see, I've got install major locations only. Now, if I go to Northern Ireland, for example, and get rid of the install major locations only and click apply filters, as you can see, we've got 479 locations. But if I click filter and click apply that, and please wait, you see there's only one major city. And if you go to like California, there's 69 major locations. So it's, you go in for each state, click the filters, click apply for major locations, and it'll automatically just build major cities for the whole, I think it's 400 or so we've got in the United States that we class as, as, as major locations. There might be the other one here there are missing. And if you do find one that's missing, you go into your locations and you just, you just add a new location. You add it here first. After you've added it, you go into like, see Abby Hay here, and we click edit. And then what you do is you need to add these additional. So if you find one or two that's missing, you add the latitude, longitude, zip code, and uh, region, county, country, add that information, and that additional area can be added manually. So if there's one missing that you want to add, or if you live in a specific area, so you want to target your hometown as well as major locations, that's how you do it. Um, is it okay for SEO to uninstall thousands of locations so I can focus on only 60 or 70 like you advise? If they're all indexed, 301 redirect wouldn't usually cause too much of a problem. What I tend to do is, if I've built a website, I've probably got about five or 10 um, evergreen style websites that I use. And if I find that one starts to drop a little bit, I delete the whole thing, reinstall WordPress and put a brand new evergreen style website up. And usually that gives them a boost again. Um, so I don't, I don't know is, is, is the real answer. You, you can I delete areas, I add 301 redirects to the home page, and I've never had a problem. But depending on how many pages are indexed and how big it is, I, I wouldn't like to just guess. But my, my process is I, I don't worry too much about particular sites. I'll go in and just delete the whole thing and build a brand new one as soon as it starts to, to not rank anymore, or I think it's got too many small areas on it. Um, somebody's asked, is Keith's course going to be a rough price? What, what, what's your course going to cost, Keith, that you're creating? Uh, well, it's definitely going to be free. I mean, at the moment, I've already up to the point where, I, because this is an over-the-shoulder course, and basically I'm going from picking, like, basic SEO, picking your niche, you know, doing all your keyword research, building your site out, and you're going to get the, the templates yourself. Like, so, you know, so that basically, you can pull them templates straight into your Elementor and use them as the stand and tweak them and do whatever you want. All that's like sort of going to go with you. And then what's going to happen, because like I said, the sites only went up on, the first one went up on January the 1st this year. Um, and what's going to happen going on from there is you're actually going to see me rank these sites. You're going to see what like sort of backlinks I use. The whole job lot is all over the shoulder. Now, those who get in first, but I'll release, which hopefully it's going to be released in um, like February, um, at the moment, I've got 70 videos already. So you're going to get a lot more than 70 by the time I've gone through all my other stuff. Um, first release, it's going to be like sort of $97. And then obviously, once it's all built and everything like that, it's going to be, you know, it's going to go up a lot more. Because um, obviously, as more and more information gets put in. So if you're in first, you're going to get it very, very, very cheap. Because like I say, there's 70 videos now. And, you know, there's a long way to go yet. Quick question there, Keith. What about a members area or something where you're going to be releasing this? Are you going to have a members area and that with it? There's going to be a members area and you know, you're going to be able to ask questions and obviously I'll probably create a, a Facebook group and things like that as well. Right, cool. Right. Uh, you could create X fields with images and spin alt tags for those locations. Uh, yes, Val, that, that is exactly what you can do. That one of the sites that me and a fr friend are working on at the minute, we've done exactly that. We've actually spun all the images, so I can't share the site that that particular project because it's 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 a big money project. But even things like these little icons, we've spun these and we've spun the alt tags and we've spun the title tags in addition to the images. So the images spin randomly, independently of the alt tags and in independently of the of the title tags and everything spins on the page completely brand spanking new thing yeah that's the one we've got eight four thousand word 
it's written for by Adrian and it's the best content I've ever seen it reads and spins absolutely perfectly he's expensive but he's worth it um, and I'm going to be using him on multiple projects going forward that are geotagged yes I can see you just put that in there yeah completely did you know that you can put an invisible layer on top or under the image with all the geo and main keyword for a massive ranking boost. I didn't know that, Valerie. Um, no, I don't know that, Valerie. <laughs> Did you know that? No, that might be an idea for you to do a video on that, Valerie. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just going to say. I'd love to see a video on that. No, I didn't know. So, so I'm glad I came to this webinar tonight. I've actually learned something. So you can add an invisible layer on top of under the image with all the geo and main keywords for a massive ranking boost. I'd love to see that if, if, yeah. if you get the time. Uh, Keith, like a boy in a toy shop. <laughs> Definitely. Daryl's link works, right? Cool. So that's all been shipped out now. Uh, let me just keep going. Da Mike, do you still see sell each call coming in from a website to multiple buyers? or just one buyer. Um, I do different things with calls at the minute because we wanted to try and maximize our income from incoming calls. What I've actually started to do on some of my calls is my, my staff answer the call and then they fill in the form. So they get the customer on the phone and they say, hi, blah, 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 whatever business it is that they're answering the calls for. How can we help you? And then they'll say, yeah, no problem. I'll just run through and ask you a few questions. And then they say, right, no problem. Uh, a couple of local locksmiths or a couple of local plumbers or roofers or whatever the trade it is they're going after will contact you shortly with some different quotations. And obviously, you decide which one you want to go with. We'll have them ring you in the next 15, 20 minutes. Is that okay? And if they say yeah, you submit the form to the system. The system will then distribute it to all of the local guys. The person knows they're waiting for multiple callbacks from multiple people. So everyone gets a fair shot at it. And we sell the lead multiple times as opposed to the call just once. Because a call comes in once, you can only actually sell it once, obviously. So because we wanted to try and be able to sell calls multiple times, you have to think outside the box a little bit. And it seems to work. So um, if anyone's got any better ways of doing it, I'd love to hear them and share them in the group. Okay, uh, I bought MWB thinking I could use it in lead gen. You are focused on MPP with all the training. What is Right, best deal on MPP, certainly if we are still on the this three hour webby. You, <laughs> right. I'll 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 share I've got a special offer that I shared on here before because people have been asking for it. But before you buy it, I will just state that um one second, sorry. That my right, massive website builder. MWB, so, so, so don't buy that link, I've just, I've just shared it, but um, Mass Website Builder, we're, we're currently having a brand spanking new builder incorporated into it, right, we've been working on it for a while now, and it's absolutely awesome, because the other one was a bit slow, so we're putting it in, not only that, we've got a real special offer, but once this goes live, before we do our public launch, Mass Website Builder, all of our lifetime customers are going to get a special offer, and initially it will cost you nothing, right? And the potential of it for those who push it out can earn up to 10 grand a month profit. So MWB, we are working on it. We had a problem with the builder that we we, we purchased the, the the license to the builder and we incorporated it in there and it wasn't perfect because as a, as a few years know, it had a slow loading speed. We've got a brand spanking new builder that's going in there. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. There'll be a transition period where you can keep the old one if you want or move over to the new one. And as soon as that's been finished, me and Tony's going to do a webinar for you guys and all of our founding members only, just the guys that are founding members, are going to get this opportunity where they can earn up to 10 grand a month from MWB. Um, I can't really say any more about it because Tony will kick me ass, but um, we are working on it. And if you want MPP, that's the best deal we've got in, in, on the planet. We, we normally all, it's not supposed to be still live. But if you want to buy it, you can't, but you don't necessarily need to buy it because cool stuff's happening with MWB. So watch this space. I, I've been told by next week I should be able to start testing the new builder. Um, things happen with developers. We've had to get a couple of third party developers in for some of these crazy code things they do. But yes, basically I'll stop waffling. Um, cool stuff's happening with MWB. It's just unfortunately taking a little bit longer than expected. 
but it's going to be perfect when it goes through. And I'll start doing loads of training and stuff then with the new with the new builder. Hey, uh, Mike, it's Daryl again. Hey. Uh, earlier we talked, we had that um, demonstration about the um, the images. I did find a way to not have the size of the image in the border. Okay. And it's a real simple fix. I don't think I have to share my screen, but there's um, a, the second. Um, hex code is about the character color and if you make that the same spin text as the background it'll just select it and uh have it be the same so the text will still be there but it'll be hidden because it'll be color on color ah right okay so i've got my screen open now people should be able to see it Where, what do we do so the fff um that should be the yeah. same as zero 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 basically so and whatever yeah, exactly. Whatever you put in one, you put in the other, and then you're going to make the height like 12 and make the width uh, whatever. Yeah. And then I use my spin tax uh, once I get it into the, um, once I get it into um, our program there. And that'll work with it, yeah? Not, yeah, not that, like, yeah, grab that. And it worked worked perfectly on my test. Right, cool. I won't demo that because I don't I actually know how to do it. I just look like an idiot. But those who understand what Daryl was thinking, I'll speak to you more about that tomorrow, mate, because I'm going to be dealing with my, my coders and asking them to incorporate this into MPP ASAP. Cool. Felix, but thanks, Mike. You're a rock star. <laughs> Dear to Felix. Right. Uh, oh, wait, somebody asked a question there. Right, what's the best linking strategy for the dynamic backlink builder? Is it to use the slug to the correspond? Right, so when you're creating a link from the dynamic backlink builder to the to, to your existing site, because you're using the same locations and you're going to be that dynamically linking from, say, a Manchester page to a Manchester page, use the slug. Don't use the location because the location will put the little um, percentage sign inside the URL. So if you use the 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 slug forward slash slug at the end instead of forward slash location short code that will work um better some of them will, will still be broke links unfortunately you cannot avoid that completely but say you put 500 up probably 498 is going to be working fine if you do it with the location one it tends to break a few more you still work you still get your bat links you get some that are broken bat links that, that don't really do anything but yeah that 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 works better Right, all the functions inside Lee simplified to use also in other countries, or is this only to use in the UK and US? I don't understand. Are all functions inside Lee simplified to use also in other countries, or is the only? Uh, we've got customers all over the world using Lee simplified. Um, I know we have an issue something to do with South Africa. I've been talking to a customer today about it, but I don't know if it's to do with how he's doing his, his Maps API key because after I sent him the training and said, just copy out how you do your Maps API key, it should work. He's not come back to me. Um, but, but yeah, we've got customers all over the world using um, Lead Simplify. Right, embed the MPP site on different G sites and then hammer the G site with links. <laughs> cool. I, 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 yeah, I understand what you're saying there. Yes, uh, I've, you've, shown me, do. <laughs> you've shown me doing that actually. I've not I've, I've got some Google sites actually, so I'll give that a shot. I actually know what you're talking about now. Yeah. Um right, what is the best practice for building a small site and then building it big? Does MPP create a silo? Is i.e. each state in category and then it silos the links for the locations it doesn't silo the links for the uh, major cities and things like that but if you look at this site that I did earlier if we go to the home page you can see the silo link is only major cities here and if I click on that what you'll see is the short code if it ever loads is slightly different so when I click on it it's major city underscore cities equal true. And that means it will only show major cities. Now you can do that. The, the option for that is just inside there. You just hit some of the drop downs inside of the MPP page and that'll give you the option to just only show major cities. Um, 
what I was looking at doing, because a few people have been talking about major cities, is releasing a major cities only license for the UK and the USA. Um, and and I've, got, I've had my developers working on it, creating it. So anyone who's already paying a monthly or, or anything like that, what we do is we give you that license included for free. Um, it's not quite perfect yet, and we're only going to release that for UK and USA because them databases are the most accurate. And as the other databases catch up, we will obviously start pushing out in the areas as well. Where do we get on the mailing list for Keith's course? Uh, Keith, have you got a email opt-in page or anything, buddy, that we can share? Not yet. Uh, I'll probably put one up on keithfest.com in the next couple of days or something and then I'll put it in the group if anybody wants to join us. Keith but other than that, like I say, when I get it released, it's going in the group first anyway, so. All right, cool. I'll, but, yeah. group. I'll put a, a, a thing up for a mailing list. Cool, so that's gonna be on keithbest.com, guys. Yeah. Um, Backlink server, right? Somebody's asking if, if there's a a way to redirect 301 sites, right? Is this maybe a solution to redirect? You just get a, a 301 redirect plugin and put the URL in it, whichever you want to redirect it from and where to, and it'll just redirect it for you inside your inside your website, Tommy. Unless I've misunderstood the question. I'm sorry, I missed some of that. Keith said, "Is the price 97 for the course, and it goes up?" From there, basically, what he was saying is it's going to be 97 for the first adopters. So the people that are already MPP clients, they're going to he's going to sell it just for a 97 dollar one-time fee. Did you say, Keith? Yep, one-time fee, 97 dollars. Yep. And then obviously he's going to put the price up uh, when it goes public. But the, the guys in, in in our Facebook group will 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 get it as a as a small one-time fee. Was what I, what I understood. Well, Missing first part webinar. Yeah. There was a question earlier, if you don't mind, that was talking about can you add images to spin inside of X fields? Did that get yeah. answered? Um, yeah, you can because I've reduced it. Oh, we did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can also copy the image URLs. Yeah, that's um, what I was going to say. Yeah. Paste them into the um, spin tech short codes. In, in, yeah. And and then automatic and it'll automatically do it. So you don't need any of that code. You just add the image URLs in. Let me just edit magic page. Yeah, I host them on AWS and just change the URLs and just uh, what I do is just spin text a number and it just changes the image. Yeah. So let's say we had this as banner image at the top. Yeah, you add your new spin. All you do is add your image URLs in here, in here, in here. Click save. Grab the code. Paste that into where your existing banner images and they'll automatically spin between them. And you can add as many images as you want in there without knowing any code whatsoever. All you need to do is copy the image URLs. Um, do you guys want to share your best SEO tools you use to build your websites? I don't really use any SEO tools, um, really. I've got SEO Spyglass, Rank Tracker, Website Order that I never use. And that's about it. I don't really use that many SEO tools. I, I, I do most things manually. Has anyone else got any really good SEO tools or LinkedIn link tools? I, I like Michael Bowles' tools, me. I, I think you get good results with them. Uh, I know he's expensive. Um, I, I, and I know he doesn't suffer fools gladly, so it, <laughs> he can get a bit angry. But the, the, the guy's tools work and they do seem to rank stuff. So I tend to use his stuff. But not not much else really. Um, I, I play with different tools all the time, but his are probably probably my favourite. Anyone else got any SDO tools you want to share? Um, I use uh, Patrick Turtle's um, SEO Factory uh, now and again, not like overly. Obviously, I use a dynamic backlink builder, um, and that's about it really for. You know, I've got them, like you say, the Tumblr Viper because I do use Tumblrs and I do use like um, Google sites and blog spots and WordPress sites to build. And all that's going to be in my course anyway. All that's going to be in. So you're going to get everything. For on page, 
I, I don't think you've got a better tool than, than Kyle Ruth's tool. I think that's absolutely brilliant for on page. I still use it all the time um, when I'm trying to rank stuff with content. There is something that's called um, alter alternative content or something that I shared in the group a few weeks back, but it's still not a patch on Kyle's. Kyle's tool's brilliant. Um, where do we get the info for Keith's course? It's going to be on keithbest.com. That'll be soon, yeah. Uh, Right, okay, Brian just put, yes, you sold MWB. Right, yeah, basically, we, we've got a very, spe we're gonna do a webinar soon, Brian, and anyone who got in right at the beginning, it, it, you're gonna get an opportunity to make a shit ton of money with, with MWB. And now it's gonna take work, and you're just gonna have to promote it, and, but, but, but we've got a special thing that's gonna set it up for you where we don't really make any money out of it, and it isn't gonna cost you a penny for the first three months. And then it will cost you a very small amount, but you're going to be able to make up to 10 grand a month with it, all yours, straight into your own pocket. Um, I can't share any more because Tony will kill me, but yeah, you're going to make some, it's going, to, it's going to be possible for those who want to put the effort in. Please explain a bit more. So Edward's asking, um, I, I can't go into any more detail. If Tony was on now, he'd be, he'd be shouting at me. Uh, can you give a short answer to this question? Do we also get the MWB if we get MPP with this offer? No, um, and MWB is not available. You can't even buy it at the minute. It literally was released to a closed group a few months back, and we're not doing a public launch until after we've done this special thing for our. It was our founder members. They bought it before it was even able to do anything. And those people are the only people that, that, that you're going to be able to get your hands on it off once we do go public. And we're not going to do a public launch before we do that. I'm sorry I missed some of what Keith said. Is the price next? Oh, I think we've already answered that one. Um, I think you're asking about mine. It'll be keithbest.com, but well, if you're in the yeah. Facebook group, Basically, I'll put it in there once I get uh, an email, this sort of thing sorted. I've just shared it, guys, to everybody at keithbest.com. Yeah. Uh, well, when this webinar get posted, right, well, at the minute, it's a, shit, it's the longest webinar I've ever done, three and a half hour webinar. It's so, um, <laughs> I've got to download the video and then upload it to YouTube and then share it on the group for everybody. And I'll put a link to the special offer in the comments of the um, on the group. So I'll share it on YouTube in the next, 12 or 48 hours. Um, I understand your answer about 301. Okay, cool. What core cracking software is best to use? Got to be Lead Simplify. <laughs> yeah. That was easy. That's the best level. Uh, but, but basically, if you don't know what Lead Simplify is, Brian, you can you can select, distribute, and sell leads to local businesses on complete autopilot. So literally, the phone in comes in. And it will automatically, if, 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 if they're looking for a plumber in, in Miami, it will automatically ring up to 20 plumbers that automatically in Miami and they can select whether they want to purchase it or not. And then if you've got lead buyers in your system already, then that will pull it in, record the calls, distribute the calls and sell the calls. And that each of your lead buyers logs into their system and can top up the credits as they go. So that, that's, I mean, I built it for my own businesses. So it's designed for lead generation businesses. And it's designed for businesses that make money from traffic off, off websites that, that target local businesses, not stuff that targets national bases, which which all the other call trackers seem to be. Um, I mean, Keith's site, where's the buy button? He's, he's not put a buy button up yet. I don't know if he's put <laughs> an early adopter buy button in there, but he's going to put an opt in where you can opt in. Um, he might put a pre release button up where people can buy it early. Might have been a good idea to bring that to the webinar, Keith, but he will definitely be releasing the course soon. And Keith, you should really get that opt-in on your website ASAP, mate. Yeah, I will. <laughs> My Probably your option when he's like, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> well, <that is> <laughs> um, right, what are the main plugins that we should use on MPP sites, thanks? I use Magic Page plugin, WP Schema Builder, I use, they're, they're in the PDF actually, the main ones I use. Anyone else got any that they use? Um, Shortcoder? 
uh, well, obviously, Elementor, um, I, I don't use uh, the same backup one as you use. I use Updraft Plus for backups. Same here. All in one WP migration. And that's about it. I use uh, restricted site access uh, to hold back the site until I'm ready to go forward with it. Um, I also use WP bulk delete sometimes um, for some of the things I do because I I upload a private database sometimes to go in there. I use WP Rocket for caching. Um, I hate to use Yoast, but I still use Yoast. Uh, I know. Tell me about it. I got SEO Press, but it's got a lot of bells and whistles I haven't figured out yet. Brilliant. Yeah, I should give that a try. I've heard good things. I use Astra, Astra Pro. Also, I've got 401 to 301 on there, the redirect, which redirects the local page to the home page. Also, all in one SEO pack. Um, better search replace. I think I've done that when I wanted to replace the number, and then I started using short codes. I use classic um, editor, the block editor. <laughs> you also want that. Um, what, what's the SSL tool called again? The, really simple SSL. Really simple SSL, which you're well, using. Well, it's like, it's not the SSL certificate, you don't need it. So I always put oh. my site up first and then let them get the SSL, then you don't need that really simple one. Right. So, so if you. If you Adding it first. Yeah. Uh, SR's put Michael who Michael Bowles. You look for Viper or Michael Bowles. Um his tools really work. Um I I I, I would recommend these tools to anyone. I know they're expensive, but I think they're worth the money. Do you recommend keyword research before selecting a niche and location? Right, you can exactly. <laughs> yeah, keyword research is essential. If you're not doing any keyword research, you're never gonna make any money because what you think is going to rank and what you think people search is, is, is never going to be the same thing. But I wouldn't do keyword research before selecting a niche because I would always say go after a niche that you're interested in, something that actually excites you, yeah. something you want to work in. If you look at um, cocktail sticks, for example, somebody became a millionaire from cocktail sticks. So you can make money in anything you want. But I would first of all find something you're interested in and then go after and do the keyword research and stuff like that because it'll be something that keeps you interested. And I believe that it doesn't matter how much money is in an industry. I could go after the solicitors industry tomorrow and I will never make any money in it, even though you can sell a lead for one, two, three hundred dollars each, because I have no interest in it whatsoever. Um, so I believe focus and commitment and hard work is more important than a super profitable niche. And a lot of people who go after these inch wide and mile deep niches make a shitload of money. And a lot of these guys that go after big general industries where they can sell a lead to a fortune like roofing and stuff like that never make any money because they just got no interest in it whatsoever so that's just my personal opinion but i would avoid going after something you've got no interest in whatsoever uh well when you offer offer be available okay that's for you again keith that won't be long it's going to be keith it's been com. Very I've got a few well I've, got a, well, I've got a membership site to build. <laughs> um, and then obviously just got a few more videos to like edit and then I'll be, I'll be going up. I'll keep on his case about it, guys. I'll message him every day. Um, include the Q&A notes, comments from this webby, please. Um, I will do, I'll download them, make sure there's no private stuff in there and we, we can maybe add them to the bottom of the YouTube video. Do you have a deal at the moment for Lead Simplify if I purchase? Um, the only deal we've got on for Lead Simplify is the one that, that, that goes out on the webinars, but it's not cheap. Um, I think it's on this page here. No. Um, 
if you if you submit a, a, a support ticket on it to support at mikemartin.zendesk.com I'll, I'll find and see if we've got any special offers for Lead Simplify. Yeah, Lead Simplify bought it and it's soon to implement, but use paid traffic first. What paid traffic works best for you? Um, we're using paid traffic on Facebook and Google at the minute. What we, although Google traffic's more expensive, we're finding we make more money from from using AdWords than we do from Facebook traffic. But that's because we go after local businesses, and and everybody in local businesses tends to search on um, industries. There's a good person to to speak to about anything like that, PPC and making money with pay per click is a guy called David Casser, D A V I D C A S S A R. David Casser, he's he's a PPC expert, not not just AdWords. He has PPC kit, but in fact, I'm go I'll, I'll speak to him tomorrow, and I'll see if I can get him to do a, a webinar based around pay per click and the best options and, and how to make money with them. And because he's got a PDF that, that he shared with me recently that's got about 100 different types, and he's also doing some checks to see which is the most profitable. Um, I've, I've got a webinar next week with Patrick Tuttle and, and the Ranking Factory guys to, to help everybody with the content, which I'm going to invite you all to. Then the following week, I've got something to do with ranking videos, which will be with a guy called Tony Hayes. And then the following week after that, I'll ask David Casper if I can get him on a webinar on the Wednesday, where we'll go through PPC and and how to actually best make money with paid traffic, because he, he's he's probably the best person that I've, I've that I know for that type of for making money with that. Um, I've done deals with him so that he'll do my paid traffic for me because just using his tools saved me like 40p a click on something that was like just over a quid a click. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's absolutely, he's really, really good. PDF mentions WP blank. Did you use that today? Was it? Are these referring to mine? Your PDF. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Did you use WP blank today, whatever that is? Yeah. Uh, WP blank. Not sure what he's talking about. Right, so we might be on about mine. Uh, ah, yeah, install WP black. All right, okay. Uh, just, I just get you know, no, right. So, installation instructions, Scott. Install WP blank, it says. What I meant is install a blank version of WordPress, like the one we started it with tonight. Install all in one WP migration, install the unlimited extension. Upload the WP WPress file for, for, with all in one migration, which I showed you how to do earlier. So basically, what I mean that means install WordPress blank. So just 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 general I, install WordPress. I went straight to WPBlank.com to see if it was your new theme that you put out. <laughs> no, it's just a, a very blank very WordPress. very lightweight theme, uh, Mike. Yeah, it's, so, <laughs> so light, it's just a yeah. file. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that, Scott. I'm 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 a bit crap when it comes to details. Uh, you mentioned you would explain how to use a 301 to duplicate pages. You see, if you go onto here, you just redirect to the home page, and any 404s, as you can see that that's in locksmithmanchester.com. So do that 401 to 301. Any 404s will automatically redirect to the home page of your website. Yeah, now, Brian, did you see what I did there? By the way, sorry. Uh, plugins, install plugins. There you go, 401 to 301, redirect, click on settings. 301, straight, choose your URL, done. All 404 pages by click, ticking that. So it's really, really simple. Them plugins are the proper cool. I use the HD access to do it sometimes, but to be totally honest, when, when I realized they had plugins for it, it's just a million times easier. Right, any guys aware of SEO plugin rank math? Rank math, not me, no, but have you guys heard of it? Yeah, I've heard of it. I've used it on one side, but I still prefer using PSV3 because it's got a lot more functionality to it. So that's what I use on all my sites and all my client sites. 
is there a plugin for the privacy statement we have to add to the site? Um, I use Rebu, but I know all the people use different stuff. It's not a plugin, it's kind of an external source, and then you put it on, you, you, you put a little bit of code into the um, head of your website, and that'll provide the privacy statement. But I don't know any, any decent plugins. Does anyone else know any? I've just got a, a basic privacy statement, which I can't remember where I got from, and I used on all my sites. And again, that's part of the course. But like I, I do specify in the actual course that I am not a lawyer. So if you are using anything like one of the niches I'm in, I did have to get the privacy policy changed uh, because it's to do like sort of finance and all that sort of stuff. So obviously they've got to be shit up with like sort of privacy policies and what they do and what they don't do and so i had to get that changed but as a basic one for like you know like the pest control and stuff like that you can probably just use this one but i do stress i'm not a lawyer so you need to get it checked out yourself as to what you can use and what you can't use um right somebody's asked Someone's asking you swap, they've got a lifetime license for Australia, they want to swap it for the UK or USA. We don't do any lifetime licenses now specifically. All the licenses for MPP go, uh, basically cover all 19 countries. So you were lucky to get a lifetime license on that. It must have been quite early on. We don't do any, any of them licenses anymore because obviously we've got a team of developers working on it now. Someone asked me to add, show the website, davidcasser.com. If you go over to there, click contact me, top right hand side, you'll be able to speak to David. But I'm going to have a chat with David tomorrow because me and him are working on a couple of things together and I'll get him on a webinar in a couple of weeks time, I promise. Okay, get it Mike, just blank WP. <laughs> yeah, right. What is the plugin you mentioned to use on WP sites to keep them out of indexing until they are... And it's not a plugin, is it? Uh, yeah, it is actually. Uh, I can put it in the chat. Hold on. Do you not just do uh, it? What's that? Do you not just do it inside the settings where you can just go in and say, mm -hmm. I think, it's reading? Yeah, yeah uh, that that just keeps it from going into Google. I'm talking about just completely sending them to the login page uh, so that even your you know clients can't see it. Nobody can see it, even with the URL. Um, so I use restricted site access. I put the link in the chat. Would that work with the 301 redirect? Well, it's redirecting it to the uh, login page. But the nice thing about this tool also is you can you can permit certain IP addresses to view it without logging in. So uh, you can really be specific about what client gets to see the work before it's done. Right, cool, cool. Right, so yeah, if you're gonna pop that in the chat, yeah. Yeah, I just did. All right, yeah, 7.2. Yep. Uh, Mike, I found a site, resimplified.org. Is the site yours? Don't know if it offers on the page. But right, that's supposed to have been redirected into the .com site. It is mine. It's our old site we used to use for promotions. Um, it is mine, yeah. So you don't need to worry if, you, if you're purchasing someone off there. It is still mine. It will still go through to my system. Um, it will it will go through JBZ. We're moving all of the lead simplify stuff over to PKS, so which is pay Kickstarter. So that should have been redirected, but obviously my team's not done it yet. Point of three, redirect to sitemap. Ah, oh, that's a good idea, Eric. I've never even thought of doing that, mate. But nah, not really, no, because if you've got a customer who lands on a page in say Oldham and it redirects to your sitemap, there's no nowhere for them to click to call or buy. And if they do it on a mobile, they're kind of screwed. So what, no, what, ab do. what about backlinks indexer pages from high authority domains pointing like you know 20 of those pages to your sitemap? His yeah, comment got me thinking how that could maybe work for you. Well, that's what we used to do with the expired domains. Uh, we used to buy the expired domains. That had quite a lot of bot links, and then we 301 redirect the domain into the home page and then free and then add the link to the from the home page into our existing website. So you've not got loads of pages pointing at it, but you have got the 301s to the home page, and then you have the home page pointing to your URL you want to rank. Right. 
Yeah. I've not done that for a long time because I'm getting really lazy in my old age, but <laughs> that used to be pretty powerful. Um, I don't know if it still is or isn't. You'd, you'd have to check it out. Um, I used Mark Hess WP Legal Guard, Kevin's put, so that might be another one that you can use, which is good. Plug in restricted access. Thanks, Daryl. All in one here, one here, all in one SEO as a sitemap you can activate. Uh, Eric, I've seen a few people say that they can use that with MPP, but I haven't, I haven't, I've never actually seen it done. So if it, I'd love someone to share a video of how you actually use all in one SEO to create a sitemap. I go because I don't do you build massive sites anymore. I type in sitemap, and then I go to this one here, as you can see. I put my URL in there. As you can see, I've got one of my URLs that's been in there previously. And then I just upload that file into my public underscore HTML if I put a sitemap on. I don't use a sitemap very often, but if I do, that's how I do it. Exactly the same one I use if I use it. Yeah, it does up to 500 pages instantly. And if you don't want to be going any bigger than 500 pages. No. Uh, Mike, is press release part of what you do to help rank the site as well, or is it just back linking? I don't use press releases personally, but I do know that a lot of people that swear by them and say that they're really, really powerful. Because we're doing mass page, the SEO side of things is a lot easier than it is with, um, with let's say you were trying to rank like um, Lawyer at Miami. That's gonna, you're gonna need everything. You're gonna have to do all sorts of different stuff. And it's not just the bat linking because I know some of the high level guys now, some of the real high level SEO guys, that know a hell of a lot more than than, than I do and, and most of the guys I work with, a lot of them are saying entities um, and, and and using entities to rank websites. And some of them who, who are really, really, I will say they don't even create that many backlinks anymore. And I know a lot of people are using schema to point to specific pages on the website so that all of the relevance, even if the backlinks are coming into that specific site and that specific page, is all being redirected through the schema to the home pages. Now, I won't pretend it's something I know how to do. I was talking to somebody a few weeks back who was showing me how he's doing it and what he's doing blew my mind, but I, I still don't fully understand it. Now, I'm scheduled to have a call with him again in a few weeks. And if he if he shows me and he doesn't mind me sharing it, I'll do videos showing people how he's doing it because it's, it's absolutely brilliant. But what it does is it makes your website pages rank only for the specific keywords you want for that particular web page, and it redirects all of them. It, it's great the way he's doing it. I won't, I won't try and explain it. It'll be something I'll have to share once he says I can, and once he, he goes into more detail with it. You do follow links from Tumblr sites. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael Bowles' Tumblr Viper seems to, to rank things really well. Um, I was shocked because I had a day in depth site, and he did it, and it worked. Because when he first showed me, I was like, talking crap. So he just said, leave it with me. He didn't even tell me how he was doing it at first until then he messaged me a few days later and said, you're on page five. And I was like, all right, cool. So you got it re-indexed for me. And then he's like, you're on page four, you're on page three, you're on page two, you're on page one. And now months later, we're still <laughs> sitting up there on page one. So that, that, I know all he's done, he's put about five or six Tumblr Viper links on it that he's, he's pulled in using the tool. Give a URL on mysite.com, sitemap.xml, redirect 301 to sitemap, and juice is spread around. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, that would be good. That would be good for the expired domains, that point in the expired domains at the sitemap. Right, does Lead Simplify have any management features for rank and renting of um, sites with reporting? Lead Simplify handles the incoming leads. So if somebody makes a phone call, it will automatically distribute the phone call and enable you to sell it instantly without you doing anything. Not only that, it will also do exactly the same with form fills on your websites. So if you're creating rank and rent websites, then I would not necessarily use Lead Simplify. I'd probably use overlays or use the location specific, the locations that's inside a Magic Page plugin to add their phone number to the pages that they've purchased off you based on a radius. And then, they, then their number will only show in the locations that they're purchasing from you. So you rank one website in, in 
hundreds of areas and you can sell 10 of them areas to one customer, 10 to another, 10 to another. And basically your site, if you're going after the rank and rent model, would be able to be sold to 10 different customers and you're still going to make money if one drops off because you've still got the other 90 areas sold. Just get everyone with the replay B. The replay will be 24, 48 hours. I can hook the group up with wholesale press releases, pricing. We also have press coverage. We do follow links, which is live. Okay, Jesse, um, may check out the, 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 the Facebook group posting rules. Um, share some value, mate, and we have no problem in the group with people posting about things that they offer. But we, we don't allow promoting stuff inside the group unless you add some value that people that are not just wanting to pay everyone else to help them can, can benefit from. Just to start, sorry, I already went over the can you show how the 301 redirects central location page to the home page? How did we do it now? Simple 301. Yeah, no, I've done it with the thingy. I've done a video here, so I'm going to go into my oh. YouTube. Hmm. See, that's what I watch all the time. <laughs> it brings up what you always watch. Now, my little girl does. She loves that. All right, dynamic. Uh, did, 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 do you remember where, where, where the video is key for that one that shows them step by step how to do it? No. <sighs> Not like you've got many videos. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this video is going to be used for, right? To put people to sleep at night? They're going to be like a four hour. I'm going to put this one on to go to sleep with. As it pays plug in target by location, by expert. I'll have to find the video for you doing it because it goes into quite a lot of detail uh, and shows you how to do it via the HD access file. Um, unless Keith, you, 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 free or free or yeah, can you do it? Do you know you can't do it with that plugin I use though, can you? Uh, well, no, you can do it by three. Well, you should be able to. Have you got a three hundred one redirect on? No, yours is four hundred four three hundred one. Hang on. Um, Give me a sec. Show that. No, not that site. Let's go into here. Right, let me go to. Where's it gone? It's not in that HC access, it's in that HC. Right, here are. So you go inside your HC access, rewrite on, redirect 301, plumbing services, LT, plumbing services, LT, redirect off. And what what that? Hang on, you're not showing now. Right, so, so basically what this does is, I, I've got the same one in twice, which is not needed, but you real. You put in there, rewrite it's not showing anything, Mike. It's not showing. No, oh, is it not? Right, one second. Ah, okay, I understand why. Give me a sec. Okay, so this is inside of one of my websites. You should be able to see Coda. Yep, now we can see it. Right, inside the HT access, right? So inside the HT access file, you have regenerate engine on and rewrite engine off. And then you'll need one of these lines. And what it is is, that redirect 301, then you put space forward slash that part of the URL. Yeah, so plumbing services, hyphen services forward slash LJ, space forward slash. That forward slash is the home page of your website. So what it does is redirect plumbing services LJ or LJ or whatever you call it to the home page of the website. So all you do is go into your HD access inside your file manager and add that and then just change this bit for your url structure and the forward slash for the location you want to redirect in so if i was redirecting this from um on a manchester site 
I had that little bit of code. If I let me share the code in the thing. I had that little bit of code, and what that little bit of code will do is redirect that page to. Oops. Right. Let me just stop sharing that and share thingy again, so I can leave this page behind. Google Chrome. Go back over here. Back over here. You can all see that page again, can't you? So now if I go to gas fellas. Okay, and then I go and click on one of the magic pages. I don't know where we've linked to the magic pages on here. It's been that long since I've looked at one of these sites. There is, oh, we've reduced this down so it's a single page. I can't even show you that. Oh, yeah, I can. Forward slash plumbing hyphen services. Forward slash. So that would be the magic page. If you click it, that redirects you straight back to the home page. So that little bit of code inside the HT access file does that. That's how I do it. We utilize geo anchors, geo entities, and map embeds within them as well. That sounds pretty cool, actually. Cool. Didn't want to promote. Promoting the group, mate. Share, create a video, Jesse, and show us what you do, because that sounds really, really interesting. And I'm pretty sure if you did, you'd make a hell of a lot of sales, because stuff like that really, really ranks, and it sounds like you're doing some high level stuff there. Yes, a directory site with many locations and then pages rented to individual business owners could be interesting. Well, it's very simple you do that to do that, Brian, with, with MPP. Because if you go inside of the magic page and you create a location set, and then you you add the, the overlays or the area specific information the way it keeps showing. So I could go into here now. Edit magic page, scroll down and create a new location set, call it Salford, type in Salford and let it populate, then go to radius one, locations one, save location set, grab it, go up to where my phone number is. New X field, Ooh, shit, wrong, sorry. Right, edit, add custom location set, paste that into there, then put 999999999 and click save, because we're using the X field numbers. All right, then we scroll up and you update the page. And then I go back to view the page. What you're going to see is first we're going to land on the Manchester page. So it's got this number. And then if we scroll down and look for look on ankles, that's got the same right one. Where's the Salford? I'm just going to do it in the URL. So forward slash. It's on the home page, isn't it? If we click on the Salford page, because that's the one we've just set the location set for, then Salford's got 999999. And then if you're selling it to them as SEO or as rank and rent or as whatever you want, and then the second the client says, I've not paid him this week or I'm not going to pay him this week, then you very simply just go back in and click delete, click save. And you can have 50 clients attached to one site or you can have one client based on a radius. So where I put one and one, if you put 50 and 50, it will go up to a 50 mile radius or 50 locations inside the location set here. It's a minimum. So radius 50, locations 50, your client will get 50 locations or a 50 mile radius, whichever comes first. And we've got to the end of the questions, guys. <laughs> How many people have we got left on? Wow, we've still got 67 people on. That is crazy because we've been on. 
for four hours, is it? Yeah, well, maybe you know, <laughs> three hours 49, bloody hell, that's a marathon. It was a nap for some people. Yeah, a lot of people probably <laughs> fell asleep right at the beginning. And <laughs> 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 Max is for let's do one more hour. <laughs> Great weather, thanks, guys. <laughs> Yep, yeah, guys, it's been awesome. I mean, I've got tin and tonic waiting for me at home. I'm trying to stop drinking, but then every time I get in the house, I just get pissed. So he's have stopped me from getting too drunk tonight, which is great. <laughs> uh, no, thank you everybody for showing up. I'm shocked that there's still nearly 70 people on the webinar after four hours. It's probably yeah. it's the longest webinar I've ever done. Um, and what I want to try and do is maybe do a, a at least one training webinar a month where we come on and we run through magic page or leads and fire something like that but then obviously we all know with with the way the world is and the way um the internet is new strategies and new things are coming up all the time so what i'm trying to do at the minute is reach out to a lot of people who have tools that can really really help people and, and that are working now um, and trying to get them to come on and do webinars so next week uh patrick tuttle and me and brian um, one of his partners, we're all, I think Brian was on at the beginning, if he's not fell asleep, he might still be on. We're going to go through something that's going to really help people with the content side of things. Um, it, it's, it's a great webinar um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that because obviously we know content's one of the biggest problems. And I think what what, what he's about to share after he's done a, a load of updates to, to, to it recently might really, really help quite a lot of our users. So that'll be next Wednesday and I'll automatically include everyone in it. Right, uh, what time is it? It's 10 o'clock here, mate. Still yeah. awake, awesome webby. A little hard to focus after three hours. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Still awake, trying to take it all in. Guys, I'll get the, the, get the repeats to you as quick as I can. Um, everyone that's been on, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for Keith and Daryl. Um, I haven't paid them to come on tonight. They've actually come on. <laughs> out of their own goodwill um they, they are both in my my lead simplify experts group um and magic page plugin experts group because they're they're two of the people who do very very good money using these products so they really do know what they're doing so if anyone does decide to reach out to anyone for help or is, is looking for somebody to to work with them then i would really recommend these two guys and that's the reason i've asked them to come on tonight because some of the stuff like what daryl's shown and to know what Keith's shown, I, I didn't have a clue about it, but also what they, they just shown tonight has given me ideas for creating new short codes and new ways to automate the process, especially around what, um, what Keith was showing. And I've seen all the work he's putting in there. I think a few short codes could, could really simplify that. I need to relay that to my team who don't speak the best English. So <laughs> I'll try. And if anybody's frustrated that Keith doesn't have a buy button, my site does. So just hop on over to mine. <laughs> well done, Daryl. Love it. <laughs> I'll have a buy buy button soon. Yeah, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna share that um that kickboxing video with you of Keith now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's shown it when he was in Barcelona. It's awesome. He, he knocks this 25 year old muscle steroid steroid out. A kickboxing fight, it's absolutely brilliant. Keeps the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. If you start to run. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, I'm going to thank yeah, everybody thank for coming on tonight. I'm going to end the webinar because I've got a 10 minute walk home. Um, and even in Spain, it gets cold at this time of night. So, really appreciate you all being on. I'll share the recording as soon as I can. And just one last time, thank you, Daryl and Keith. Really appreciate you both coming on. Excellent yeah, value added commentary. It was awesome. Cheers, everybody. I'll get something yeah. sorted soon. Yeah, right. Have a good night. See you too, mate. Sweet cheese all soon. Bye-bye. Yes, I'm Daryl. <laughs>